Welcome to the Irrelevant Illiterate Podcast. I'm Oatmeal Tits, that's Dead Nuts. And with us today of the bands Krieg and Scafe. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, Scafe. Uh, yes. Previously of Scorched, Cut Short, and Primitive Ways. Yeah. Mr. Bill Durant is here. Durant. Durant. I'm trying to make you fucking fancy, dude. No, it's Durant, it's Durant, like Currents. Or, or like, you know, the basketball player. Uh, yeah, Kevin you know, Durant. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Durant. I used to get that all the time, and people used to just, you know, or, or you, you would all relate it and just kind of stop, looked at myself, and just... Then he's yeah, like, his third cousin. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Get it all, we get it all the time. That, that's why I'm sitting here in a bank working. He fucks my <laughs> fat sister. <laughs> I'm assuming you have a fat sister? I'm an only child. Ah. Uh, which also probably explains a hell of a lot I'm telling you, you gotta, get, you gotta get a fat sister. It's pretty sick. <laughs> it's pretty fucking sick. Why, why is it sick? <laughs> because she brings home fucking Puerto Rican boyfriends. That's why. <laughs> and they teach her how to make those adobo pork chops. Mm. Oh, then you learn how to make them. Oh, hell yeah. And now I still fuck them to this day. I know how to make yellow rice now. I learned a lot from her fucking a bunch of Puerto Rican dudes. So <laughs> shout out my sister, dude. Hell yeah, A-Train. Thank you. Thank you, A-Train. I've learned so much culinary delights <laughs> just from the dudes she's fucked. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I learned to fucking uh, grill from black dudes she was fucking for a while. So, yeah. My sister's brought a lot of enrichment to my life by proxy. Mm-hmm. Pussy proxy, <laughs> if you will. Um... Speaking of a proxy, a couple of minutes ago, before you showed up, I got a, a DM on Instagram from one Joe Meganson, and he says, uh, I hear Bill's coming on to the podcast today. Why don't you ask him why his favorite band is the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Oh, God damn it. There's a running joke with, uh, with or their friend group. They're just two of, the, two, like, two of the most maddening bands of all time for me are Red Hot Chili Peppers and Sublime. You know. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, There's a Venn diagram there. <laughs> it's generally a perfect circle with, with Dave Matthews Band like right there in the fucking middle. <laughs> just just band hair. bands just that would like okay, you know, like you're all talented musicians. None of you can write a fucking song to save your life. No riffs, zero I riffs. No riffs. I wouldn't say the people in Sublime are talented at all. Well, one of them is dead, so no. But even when he was alive, he's, he's, he wasn't yeah. talented. I, I I would also co-sign that. But yeah, I agree with you on the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like, yeah, you guys are can play your instruments like a motherfucker, but you just make these dumbass jock jams. Yeah, no, Sublime is like the the combination of like the the three shitty the th- three great genres that could. Well, okay, great might be subjected with third wave ska, but yeah. I was like, wait, great huh? <laughs> I might have ska to is reggae. Back. What are you talking about? Like, you can fuck with some reggae. You can fuck with some even third wave ska Ugh. and punk, and just take the three shittiest parts of them all, and it's just Sublime. <laughs> You don't take yeah. You don't take the highlights of the fucking. Oh, absolutely not. No. Just the absolute shittiest parts of each of them. Yeah, it's just. And you've never met a Sublime fan that's good in conversation and that's like fun to hang out with. Uh, it, I mean, you know, it's Dave's not here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at drooling all over your drug drug rug, fucking reek of ball like dirty uh, ass bong water. I don't know that I've ever met a Sublime fan. I've met. Plenty of people who wear sublime shirts, but I wouldn't call them fans. I uh, hooked up with a girl on Tinder, and <laughs> I went over to her place, and she had... Hey, quit bragging. A, not, oh, this is not a brag, <laughs> trust me. And not not in her bedroom, in her fucking living room, right behind the television, that fucking Sublime Sun like, poster... Yeah. And it's had like tour dates on it, and it had signatures on it. Sweet. And I was like, not coming back here ever again, <laughs> unless she knows how to make a good pork chop. But she didn't make me anything, so I didn't go back. Plus, it was pretty sweet though. I gotta give her that. Shout out to that. I, nice. I, was, really, I was two seconds away from saying her fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> then again, as soon as I say, you know, she has signed Sublime poster behind her TV. If she's might be listening. She's probably like, you it's gonna fucking fucker. narrow it down. <laughs> Shout out. Beep. It's gonna narrow it down. I'm gonna bit. tell everybody how little your dick is. I'm like, haha, beat you to it. <laughs> Good <laughs> job, beat stupid. Beat you to it. <laughs> beat you to it. I jerk off with three fingers. Ah, boy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. What do you got going on today? I don't know. I was thinking. Oh, shit. And then I stopped thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I thought I had something written down, but I don't. <laughs> I'm glad you came prepared, buddy. You know, I, I'm yeah. actually starting to wonder. I, I feel like I may have come more prepared today than uh, seriously. I, I actually have a hell of a lot of notes on the homework. Ooh, this, we'll is, this homework is great from somebody who was fucking terrible in school too. Homework comes later, buddy. Yeah, we'll get to That's that eventually. Like, you don't have any news or anything? Oh, I've got news. Yeah. Jesus Christ. 
I didn't know you wanted to get to it so soon. Would well, you have anything that goes before it? No, I don't. Uh, my, uh, I was lazy. Should we give a shout out to to a, to a fallen angel? Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Indeed. Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens yep. passed away. Yep. Yesterday, the other day. Yes. And the guy uh, who's been on the worst worst raw deal of all time. Oh my God! Yes. Worst raw deal of all time. Paul. He, he got arrested j- doing what you're supposed to do in a fucking porno. Theater. Yeah. Not that I've ever. Because this was pre. Not yet. Internet. Not yet. This was pre-internet. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you can stay home in jail in the comfort of your own fucking home. And even then, you're fucking taking a risk because that's back in the days of dial-up. So he went to a place where you could J.O. and look at pornography. The J.O. Pornography Theater. And they crucified him for it. They took his shows away. Like, he couldn't get movies. He got blacklisted for doing what he's supposed to do in that spot. If he did it anywhere else, it would be bad. Yeah. Other than home, of course. So... Maybe he was the first person to get fucking Me Too, dude. You know what I'm saying? Well, in in 2000... And Pee-wee cranked so Weinstein could run. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something when... Of course, when everybody's posting about a celebrity dying, yeah. there's one person who has to stick out and be like, uh, didn't they do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I read it, I was like, uh, the ho- I hope there's no smoke to this fire. But uh, in 2002... He was uh, he was charged with possessing images that were in- initially cat- categorized as child porn, and I was like, oh "Boy, so initially categorized, initially though. categorized." So I read, yeah, reading into it. So maybe he like fucking barely legal. So I'm trying to I'm trying to be devil's advocate, PB. PB, don't let me fucking down. No, this is New York Post, so it could be reliable, could not. Oh, New York Post. Uh, uh. Yeah. Toys R Us removed his toys from the stores. At 2002, they were long out of circulation by then. Cindy Lauper, who voiced uh, the Pee Wee's Playhouse theme song, said Fuck this was a victimless occurrence. So, in the wake of his arrest... Good, at, good looking out, Cindy. Right? In 1991, CBS announced it was pulling reruns of Pee Wee's Playhouse, and Disney MGM mm-hmm. Studios suspended a tape of Pee Wee's voice from its studio tour narration. Because of all the scandal, let's see. I want to. I want to know what the actual deal was, though, because slandering a man right after he dies is the worst edge lord shit. It really fucking is. Like, let people have their couple months and then do it. Yeah, be you like, know? hey, remember, hey, remember this. But yeah, not hey, like, hey, remember something he got actually exonerated for. Yeah, it's just the charges were dropped. Yeah, but I want to know what they were. So if he didn't actually do time for them, he probably wasn't. It was probably fucking like barely legal porn, that shit. So what? The it, Eighteen-year-old porn. What it was was he had a handful of images from, uh, like, so he 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 Spit had a co- collection of something like ten thousand nice. vintage magazines from the actor's home. Some of which for were more than three decades old. Fuck yeah. So. That maybe there was questionable images in there, but he pled guilty to a lesser charge, and the and the uh, the child porn shit was dropped. So it sounds like he was kind of cool and had some old pervy magazines, and maybe a couple few pages back there was some questionable shit in there. I mean, just look 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 at you know like how much shit changed between the like the beginning of the '60s and the end of the '70s. Like you know, David Bowie, not the you know like it's just other people that were definitely fucking oh, kids. Oh, and yeah. it's just still even to this. There's day, some that are still it. alive that were doing it. Oh, absolutely. Look at you, Mick Jagger, Jimmy Page. Yeah, name Jimmy, Jimmy name Page. anybody's uh, favorite rock stars. He had a 14 year old ro- wife. Yeah. Jagger was fucking didn't, didn't kids. Didn't Ted Nugent actually have a have a child yes, bride as well? Yes, okay. he did. That's what I thought. I thought he was, she was fourteen. I couldn't remember. I think if oh, no, I don't want to say it and be wrong, but some what it was it was Jimmy Page who adopted the girl so that he could come or she could like go on tour with them. Go on tour with yeah, them. Yeah, it was like, like and it wasn't like in. just his Woody Allen. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't just Jimmy Page's oh. fucking fuck buddy either. That whole band was doing that shit to the fourteen year old girl. Yeah, and I mean, Inserting like, th- I mean, for, for for all like for all intents and purposes, thank God times change, but you know, yeah, mm-hmm. like oh, I've got a couple of you know vintage magazines, and fuck, I haven't looked, you know, especially like what would you say ten thousand? Yeah, there's no way he's you, you go. All are you going to go in there and like spank bank all yeah. ten thousand of those magazines? There's no. no way. No, absolutely not. It sounds more like somebody with money bought a bunch of collections off of people, yeah. and was like, I have a library now. Man, man of taste. 
Sure. <laughs> I'm telling you. He's a collector. He likes muff. He likes night. <laughs> he likes the fine things muff. in life. Back when you could still call it muff. I just would think it'd be funny as shit. It's like, oh, you're a pedophile. He's like, I know you are, but what am I? It <laughs> uh, would be so... F- if he went to like any kind of court hearing in character, I would just fucking... <laughs> I it almost sounds like he, like something that would have happened in one of the Cheech and Chong movies where he was where he was like oh, co-starring. God on. damn it! What was the? I forget which one. You're the guy from the, the Hamburger Train, <laughs> right? He's They're just like under the under the table doing blow for yeah. like three hours of the movie. When he's, uh-huh. like, he keeps repeating, he's like, "History of Rock and Roll, Bruce Springsteen fucking it all up." <laughs> it's just like yes. I wanted to sample the history of rock and roll, Bruce Springsteen fucking it all up so bad, but no band would ever let me do it. Why? Because they're all fucking losers. That's, that's you, why. You that's can't do that in this area. You know you can't do no, that. No, nah, people hate too fun. many motherfuckers in Philly and Jersey gonna crucify you. For yeah. That. Nah, that's that's when you do it behind their back. I've been in too many bands <laughs> of people that wear cargo sweats. So yeah. Uh, I, I, that's, oh. Speaking of doing it behind people's backs, uh, it, well, there's probably not a good lead in. But also, it was uh, it was Cheech and Chong's next movie. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I used to do with uh, with, uh, with primitive ways, I, like I didn't clear any of the, the audio clips that I used to have. So I yeah. used to have like fucking Allen Ginsberg, yeah. uh, f- reading po- goofy ass poems, Malcolm X, and everything like that. And like one day it was like, can you fucking stop? What are you doing? Are you doing it like before every song, after every song? Uh, it wasn't for that reason, but it was for like the, you know, like you're kind of bumming everybody out. <laughs> so fucking what? It's music. It's like, not. Sp- oh God, <sighs> that's some corny ass shit. Yeah. Like, why don't you put on like something from like Scarface or Carlito's Way or something? Ugh. So that's exactly what we need is more of that, mm-hmm. more of those samples. When your brother is your brother, but he betrays you, he's no longer your brother, dog. And then like, <laughs> gen, gen. like shut up. People need to bring back cool samples. They need the to. Music. They need to branch out more. Yeah. Because Stay away from the fucking gang movie genre or the mafioso movie genre, and dip into fucking comedy. Uh, um, I would I would love a comedy album from Graf Orlock. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing but comedy samples, just you know, I mean, like it's the breakdowns. Uh, the split we did, Iron Price did with the scent had a bad Santa clip <laughs> and a Wayne's World two clip. Which one? Which, which, from which? From both, actually. When, I'd like to know. Yeah, actually. Um, the Bad Santa clip was, uh, what's his name? Tony Curtis? The little little mm-hmm. person? I think so. It was like, you an emotional fucking cripple. Your soul <laughs> is dog shit. Every <laughs> single fucking thing about you is ugly. And That's the Wayne sample. And the I Wayne's was kind of hoping it was the you ain't gonna shit right for a week. <laughs> <laughs> but not just that, but John he Ritter said, saying, I was, she was gonna F U C K her in the. <laughs> He's like, well, man is a sexual being. <laughs> <laughs> and from uh, Wayne's World 2, it was uh, the Chris Farley thing. It was like, I hate my dad. I hate my life. But I'm it was like, but some something is like, I'm gonna go pick a fight. It just was that. <laughs> I'm gonna go pick a fight. Yeah. The other one that would have been good for that would be would have been uh, I can't remember if it was the first or the second one, but it was Al Bundy and just him like oh, that absolutely yes. just like stone cold fucking. Why just, is it when you kill a man yes. in battle, you're a hero, but when you kill a man in the heat of passion, you're a murderer? One of the fucking <laughs> coolest lines that no one ever. Did, did, did fucking we actually used. just start a band? Yeah, we just did. Great. Earmarking that. Just to use that sample. That's such a... <laughs> the, uh, a, a missed opportunity from Bad Santa. Oh, uh, yeah. Cause, you know, I'm on my fucking lunch break, okay? <laughs> yeah. I because, love that. Because we needed more samples from The Departed and The Irishman, you know, <laughs> yeah. instead of going to the classics. I always wanted... Even the, I wanted to do a song with Cancer Priest that was uh, somewhat anti-gun, and it was going to be the Wayne's World clip of I don't even own a gun, let alone many guns that would necessitate a rack. What am I going to do with a gun rack? But everyone's like, "No, it's stupid." I'm like, all right, man. But the song already. But they existed. let me. They let me put clips in from the goon, so that was cool. The goon. You never saw the goon, the yeah. hockey movie. Yes. Yeah. Once Mm-mm. upon a time. It was uh one I, of the guys. Fucking ages. It was. It was, a, it was a song. It was anti. Uh, Dave's gonna kill me. It was no. about the. It was about the opiate crisis. The song was, and it was uh. One of the parts of the movies is one of the guys like they're welcoming a new member onto the team. He's like, two rules here, man. Don't touch my Percocet. <laughs> and do you have any Percocet? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it's a fucking great movie. It's got a uh, the guy who played Stifler. I forget his fucking name. 
Oh, Sean. Sean William Scott. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, he's just this uh, nightclub bouncer that they draft to be a hockey enforcer for some, like, super, super farm team. Oh, but it's so fucking funny, dude. It's a funny fucking movie. I mean, it's not, like, Slapshot level of funny, but it's still one of the funnier... It's still good. Co- like, yeah, hockey it's been, movies. It's, it's, yeah. It has been fucking <laughs> yeah. ever since I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> it made a sequel. It's not so good, but the first one's wor- definitely worth watching. Speaking of music, remember... And, and being funny and bad, like we talked about with Sublime shit. Oh, thank shit. you, sir. Remember Slapshot? Oh, I hate Slapshot <laughs> so much. Sorry, the they band Slapshot? Slap yeah, the band. Uh, f- fuck New York is great, but like that's that's about where it ends for me. There, there, are, a couple, uh, there are a couple other songs, but they just... One they, of those bands that never really did They it, had really. this one song. I don't remember what the fuck it was called, but it was off for one of the later albums when they started like um, hugging like hair metal and thrash more. People but it, gotta stop. it was on this um, this uh, punk video compilation, and the beginning is just the guitar player, like randomly pulling the trigger of a power drill. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like that actually. <laughs> and then it goes into like this really like DRI sounding intro. It's fucking hysterical. I do like that. I and one of the say. years we played, this is hardcore. No, we played the pre-show of this hardcore that year, and uh, we were one of the first videos to get posted. It was actually the same week, and we got our video posted on Hey Five Six, and the singer from Slapshot is like, "Huh, I bet those guys went right to the food trucks as soon as their set was over." <laughs> and, Dude, uh, he read you. What the and fuck? And the funny thing is, <laughs> he's right. He's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a gyro. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I had a gyro, man. Guilty. But was it good? It was adequate. That's a no. It was. It was good. Not amazing or great. What's his fucking name? Choke? Yeah. He's it's, a dude who's got he's his a, ass kicked constantly back in the day. By he's a hairdresser. People. Yeah. He's it's just a dude. So the random. Fuck out. He's yeah. It's so random. I know that a Good for him. I, I, I mean, he'd still, I know. no pun intended, choke me to fucking death, of course. Sure. But. Yeah, he's just, well, he was one of the first dudes that just did nothing but talk shit and get his ass kicked for it. Ah, that'll but happen. Now that's like an art form in hardcore, so I guess he's maybe a trendsetter in that way. <laughs> sure. He, he knocked down some walls, paved some ways for people that came after him. I don't remember whatever. But musically, I don't like them. The last nah. time I saw them, uh, my friend's shitty oi band was playing Bar 13. Ugh, sick. And they were on the show. Actually, you know who else was on it was uh, Edgewise. Now, can you tell me that because, of, of course, it was at Bar 13, can you tell me the other 12 bands that were on the fucking show? <laughs> You're close. I almost spit my drink out. You're close because honestly, <laughs> I went with Dave Janis to this show because mm-hmm. we wanted to see. He likes Slapshot. And I was like, he's like, do you want to go? I'm going to come to, to Delaware. Do you want to go see Edgewise and Slapshot at Bar 13? I'm like, that place is kind of sketchy. He's like, yeah, well, we'll just watch them and bounce. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> I wish it worked. Next thing you know, you're there till 3 o'clock in the fucking well, we morning. We get there. I wish and it worked. There like was. That. The show started an hour and a half late. What? And the first band played. <sighs> it was some shitty oi band. I don't remember their names. And then it was another hour until the next band played. <sighs> even though the bar was full of band members. Because uh, one of the other bands was uh, some guys I know from Baltimore, uh, Unyoung Heroes. It's the singer from Next Step Up and a bunch of skinhead dudes. But, um, yeah. You're missing an important part it, about Bar 13, though. And here's the thing, though. It, it doesn't yes. take that long to load in. The it fucking, doesn't. You, like, I play it there go, a lot. There's a door yeah. on the stage that goes the fuck yes. outside. It's yes, not it hard to get yes. in. I've taken my drum set out of that yeah. door before but, many uh, times. We ended up asking uh, Vince from Edge. I was like, what time do you guys play? He's like, 1.30. 1.30? They actually told him a time? 1.30. And here's the thing. They were maybe third to last. Ugh. So we were just like, nope. <laughs> I think we went and got Indian. Checks and then down just, the street. Just went, they just went home. Mm-hmm. I've just, eaten Indian in like three of the last four days, and I'm kind of... I've been dry been, on Indian lately. I need to get back. I had the, Vindaloo, maybe I have I had the Vindaloo chicken maybe Yummy. two weeks ago. I was uh, repercussions for like two or three days after. Oh, I, pre- I preempted this and took an Imodium. I, I, knew, an Imodium. I knew what I was doing. You take an Imodium, and then when it's too Corked backed up, up. you got to take a gas X. <laughs> To fucking battle that. So yeah, Indian food's great, but you gotta like, take a lot of other supplemental shit with it to yeah, keep your I, gut from killing yeah. you. I shit kombucha for t- thirty six hours after I eat it, but Oof. man, is it good. But I will go through all of that instead of listening to Slapshot. <laughs> that band fucking stinks. With it was it was Garrett when they were getting back together for This Is Hardcore. 
the the one time he was like I I'd never paid them any mind and he was like gung ho about Slapshot. I was like, all right, Why? I'll, I'll stick. Uh, ask him. Maybe because he's from Boston or some shit. Garrett uh, is not from Boston. Or or not Bo- Massachusetts or something. Garrett is from Brookside, Delaware. Grew up a block like a, a half a mile. So what's his connection to Massachusetts then? Because he loves it. <sighs> I don't remember. It's something with his dad, I think, or family. Damn, I didn't know he grew up in Crookside. Yes, he is. I used to date a girl living in Crookside. He's, uh, I grew up in Big M, and he was on the other side. So if you're heading towards uh, 84 along. Big M? Yeah, uh, Martindale. Uh, oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 uh, gotcha. Right where the school was. Yeah. yeah like a block away from there. Um, he was on the other. So if you're heading down Mirrors Road towards 84 along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on your left, like right after the blinking yellow lights. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So I, I know dated, exactly what you're I dated a girl about. who lived in Kimberton. Oof. And uh, they used to talk shit on... Brookside called you, it Crookside. Will you stop bragging already? <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, yeah, Brookside's gross, but this isn't much better. <laughs> like, what yeah. are you talking AKA about? Whatever it's called this this uh, this this week, yeah. Yeah, it's just that, like Jesus. That Christ. was like Willow Run talking I shit think, on Elsmere. I think one of the arguments she gave was, well, at least we have a pool <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> sweet. Section eight has pools. It's like. Calm down. Well, like, keep it in your pants. He he had he has some emotional connection to Massachusetts or some shit. So they go on, and I was like, "This is what I was waiting for all day." Because they were a headliner, <laughs> of course. And they started doing that Depeche Mode cover, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. this makes sense." And poorly, I will say. I, I mean, I can't. I can. One of the last. To be fair, I actually want, don't want to hear any hardcore band come up, cover Depeche Mode. Fair. Either like, I don't want to hear any a legitimate, band a leg, either a legitimate cover or like in a hardcore sense, you know, like re- a reimagining. I don't want to hear either of those fucking things. Yeah. I love Depeche I, Mode. I hear you. I don't yes. want to hear no. either of those fucking things. I don't want to hear any band. There cover was them. this uh, this label. I don't know if it was around when you guys started coming around, but it was around. It was pretty prevalent when I was kicking around early on it was called two damn hype records i don't know if you remember it it's out of philly uh put out a lot of really good shit but it also put out a lot of tribute albums one of them was an um a smith's cover album and it was a bunch of just like meathead hardcore bands covering the smiths huh. and then the other one was a bunch of uh a couple meathead bands and also a couple like good metalcore bands covering the cure hmm. and most of it was dog shit. Do you ever want to hear Bad Luck 13 cover The Cure? Um, the Cure? I don't want to hear Bad Luck 13. <laughs> uh, but what I, I will I, say uh, was... For, gr- from, at least purpose. from a joking st- standpoint, like, yeah, like, Bad Luck 13 yeah. is, is funny for, like, the nostalgia, at least being from Delaware, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's fun for, like, they, it's fun for five minutes, you get hit in the head with a fire extinguisher, yeah. and you go, yeah, now I remember why I didn't want to come to this. And it's, it's, yeah. it's great for one-upping, like, norms at work, like, oh, my craziest concert story. It's like... Yeah, we used to see this band at uh, at Bar Thirteen or or uh, East End Cafe called Bad Luck Thirteen. Let me tell you about that. It's like, oh, you saw Gore? I saw a band who tried to burn down a VFW <laughs> with, with a flaming baseball yeah. bat. While but, the, yeah, while the doors are chained but shut. There get, was a good Cure cover on there, and it was Converge. Huh. with the singer from uh, Caven. Okay, you we you know what that that's a high bar though. Yeah, you know, like Converge doing any cover or at least gonna. Be in the they gave it decent a, fucking realm, you know. Yes. Like at least do it. it. Like even if it's it's like okay, yeah, I can see where you're coming with that. It's like it, it's probably at least not dog shit. I also was probably a poor judge too because I'm not the biggest Cure fan. Like I like the Cure fine, but I'm not like I'm right there with. I don't you. own a lot of their records or anything like that. Yeah, I'm uh, right por- there with you. Pornography, uh, uh, pornography, and, and another one slip on my mind right now. It's Faith, por- pornography, and Faith. Are Did you two fantastic fucking records? Did you hear? Um, uh, this is shit. Maybe less than ten years ago, um, Damnation AD put out a complete cover record of the pornography album. Yes, they did. And I gotta say, even though I'm not, don't know a lot about that record, I've listened to it maybe twice. It was an entertaining listen. Mm-hmm. But I like I think like you said before, it's got to be like you got to find someone who's gonna set the bar high. Mm-hmm. You can't just throw it at like some like I remember the Smiths tribute album the best cover on there was sub zero <laughs> so it's like i i can't Im- i like i, I like I mean, sub zero but and, when and they're your top tier band on there it's like yikes let's be real i'm a dog shit musician mm-hmm. i i accept that 
I know he my goes, wheel. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I know my wheelhouse. <laughs> so am I. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. But do it like I can't think of many guitar players in hardcore unless we're talking maybe like botch. We're getting in maybe like more of the metalcore realm yeah. where you actually have a degree of decent fucking musicianship. Yeah. Trying to cover Johnny Marr. There's a been a, like I, I could just see a lot of half ass half ass slap together fucking guitar lines, and it just like these are like we're talking about guys who learn songs by tab. Yeah, where like, I am, I I've am one of those bands, people. I've been one of the. I've always been in those bands where none of us know how to read music. Correct. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I am one of those people. Yeah, right here. Like, there's been a few times like uh-huh. covers have been brought to a band practice, and in every band I've been in, I'm just like. No, we shouldn't do that. It's like, why? It's a great song. I was like, yeah, but we can't do that. <laughs> we can't physically play it. We cannot. Uh, you know, one of the funniest things ever is this is Dead and Berry days. Our bassist wanted to cover Primus's John the Fisherman. That's funny. And we're like, you physically cannot <laughs> do that. You have a five string bass and you only play the top one. <laughs> I like, have I have watched I, I have watched countless videos of Les Claypool playing bass and I yeah. just ever like it just stoned as shit just like thinking like oh yeah I could absolutely do that and then like I sober up and go no, no. <laughs> yeah and he was just like we should cover John the Fisherman and we were all just like we weren't dogging him for this choice we we're just like you can't a song and Fox, neither it's can, not a dead and buried song. and neither can <laughs> and neither can the rest of us none of us were that capable at our instruments or skilled. In any other way to you, do you, you knew, you knew uh, you knew guitar player uh, from Primus, what band he used to be in? Uh, possessed. Possessed. He was on. Uh, mm. he, he was, was not it? on Death Metal, but he was on. He was on Seven he, Churches, wasn't he? No, he was. I'm sorry. Uh, he was not on Seven Churches. He was on the album after, but he, I, I believe, he's on the album after. He joined for the tour after Seven Churches. Am I? So he was. He did not record on Seven Churches. Am I wrong that he was also briefly a member of Exodus? Hold on, we're going to go to the good old Metal Archives. God bless that fucking website, dude. That website is fantastic. Is this Encyclopedia Metal? Oh, it is. I was on it the other day, and uh, what was it? we did the Is It You're a Listening Party. It's a, it's a huge resource of this show. We did the Is It You're a Listening Party, and I looked up Scissor Man, that band with us still. Fuck yeah. Remember I was wearing a Cretan shirt? Yeah. The one dude from Cretan is Scissor Man. Whoa. And I was just like, what? <laughs> well, uh, like that. <laughs> That's how long I said that shit. A, a band that you like enough to buy a shirt is obviously a shared member of the the sec- first or second best listen of that day. That makes oh sense. Oh, my God, dude. I haven't gone back yet, but I remember I have, how good it was. I have to. It's been on. I've been listening to those <laughs> to the two records they have on there on repeat. Everybody, check out. <laughs> Go to Bandcamp and check out Scissor Man. It's a one man band. Oh man! <laughs> he it's a pretty much Mortician Warship, but he steals Nirvana riffs <laughs> on the the one split that he has up on there, and it is fucking brilliant. This dude <laughs> fucking rules. Go check out Scissor Man on Bandcamp. You uh, won't be. Uh, so here's the confu- Here's the one actually. So no, he was not in okay. Exodus that I'm seeing. I want to check and see if this is the same Marauder, but I'm seeing that he played live for Marauder. I mean, and that's it's entirely possible. Because there was an M.A. Marauder, and then the one from New York is M.E. The Spanish mm. spelling. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to find it out. Then again, at this point in time, I, everybody and their grandmothers play guitar for the Marauder from New York. So uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. It is M.A. Yeah. So okay, there you go. That, yeah. that probably explains it. So there's one that has the American spelling, one that has the Spanish spelling. I mean, to be it, like, there is a great timeline where Larry Lalonde's playing with Marauder at This Is Hardcore, actively telling people not to sell crap to the, <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> drummer of that would be not, fucking great. Do not give them the drummer money I choose for to believe. I, I, I choose to believe in that timeline. <laughs> I, I like that timeline a little bit better. I wonder if he's still smoking crack to this day. Uh, I hope he is, I and, so too, and peacefully. Get help. So too. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. How about some news? Give me some news, buddy. Let's get some news. First, a real estate agent was fined $20,000 for chugging a container of milk in a seller's house. <laughs> you ever you ever get so thirsty that you drink milk? Can't say that I have. I've done it where there was the only option. You I was in a house with shitty tap water, and the only other option was fucking milk. ABC Real Estate. Whole est- milk. 
A- ABC real estate agent was fined $20,000 for drinking milk from its container during a showing of a seller's home. According to North Shore News, Mike Rose arrived at a house in 2022 to show potential buyers. He eventually became thirsty and searched for something to drink in the fridge. He couldn't find water, but settled on drinking milk straight from the container. Bro, take your fucking hand and put it in the faucet. <laughs> I, know. I, I mean, I, oh, maybe I it was one of those houses that doesn't have or go to the bathroom water or turned on. Maybe know. the water wasn't turned on yet. Now, ha- have mm-hmm. I... Well, but then was, again, then, if he has, then, What was milk doing in there if it wasn't? Yeah, yeah, it's a valid point. Uh, You're right, <laughs> Valid point. Valid point. <laughs> Two things come to mind. The first is Anchorman. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Milk yeah. was a bad choice. It's so hot. Milk was a bad <laughs> choice. The second, the second is, you might be able to catch me drinking milk every now and then. Like, oh man, again, back to Indian food. Um, Tommy's True. a little upset. You know, I tried to lay down. And if you ain't got Tums in the house, oh, I have. Milk's a good oh, follow up. Actually, is it? Milk's a good follow up. Okay. Yes. Uh, it doesn't work as well as Tom's, but if you got like it's yeah, reflux, you know what? Also, what we'll do, and I can tell the story. Um, I was making dinner with my ex girlfriend uh, a little over, probably about twelve years ago, and uh, she, you know, she's like, "Well, I really want to help out. What can I do?" I was like, "I, I don't know." Like, mm. you know, she really I bothered me. Question. Like, like, what do you want me to do? I was like, "No, just hang out. Just hang out." Was like, all right, you can cut the peppers. So oh. she started cutting the pepper, peppers, I which were a red going. hot, a habanero, and a jalapeno. Which, okay, fuck me for just terrible choices on indigestion. Just <laughs> setting this up for failure. So We live and we learn. <laughs> so, like, about five minutes into it, she starts, like, she, just like, kind of drops the knife on the counter oh, and just no, starts... I know c- what she did. And, like, she realized that she touched her eye. Ah. Oh. So I'm living with my grandparents at the point, and she's, like, on the floor, like, freaking the fuck out. I mean, yeah. and she's vegan, and my grandmother's like, like yo, you got to take a little bit of like, you got to take something to like neutralize the acidity, something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Pour milk on. And milk. she's basically sitting there on the floor, like gagging. Uh, so disgusting. Like just the idea of putting milk in her eye, just like the even new, you know. <sighs> but you got to. So. She eventually did. It did help, and we broke up. Not that day, but it also <laughs> kind of like it, 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 just the sequence of events. Day. Not that day. It's, it's like you were never taught day. not to touch your eyes after handling peppers. I mean, to be fair, I, I did. All, I, I to be fair, I also did almost watch her cut her fucking fingers off like almost a dozen times trying to help me cook. Oh, because I remember one of the first things I was ever taught. Because my dad was really good. In the, it still is really good in the kitchen. Was when you cut something hot like a pepper or anything like that. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your dick. Yes, but I've he, done. I've done what, the latter. He didn't tell me one time. This was I don't know. I was probably like maybe fourteen. I went to take a shit after cutting peppers. <laughs> oh, and you oh, was wiping my ass. And you wiped. And I hit my I hit my portal <laughs> with my middle finger. <laughs> and I didn't think anything of it. Just washed my hands so everything was good. <laughs> About ten seconds later, I was like, ah, ah. I ran upstairs, hopped in the shower. It st- was doing nothing. nothing. I went into my bedroom. I was like, like caking gold bond on it. Like, Please, <laughs> God. <laughs> It's oil, bro. I was. I, I remember yelling at him because he was still living at the house at that point. And I, I was like, "Why didn't you tell me about my asshole?" He's like, <laughs> and "This motherfucker without breaking straw." I was like, "Why were you fingering your asshole?" <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "And I could." And so I was screaming because my asshole was burning, but I was also laughing. But I was like, "God damn it, dude!" Uh, has, has anybody ever uh, used icy hot and actually touched their junk? Yes, I haven't, but uh, my friend, my best yes. friend, like in eighth grade, did, and one of the most visceral, honest reactions I've ever seen out of anybody. This just this absolutely just scream of horror, and apparently the same sort of thing. He just kind of like ran in the bathroom. It was kind of like this sort of yeah. junk trying to like Which get it does on. Not not doing nothing. absolutely nothing. nothing. I'm fucking it's on the like ground. Blue. <laughs> you know, not that I've ever wanted to see my boys junk, but that like would have been the one time to like watch Still. this kind of like face to face kind of like just even funnier than it was. It's like a train wreck. You got to watch it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, even then I'm still outside of the bathroom, just on the ground, fucking dying. Mm-hmm. I, I encountered icy hot on the genitals by, I, I pulled the, the muscle. What's the one inside your leg, right by your dick and balls? Groin. The groin? The, not the groin. Like the glute? Right on your thigh on the inside of your thigh um the inside thigh muscle mm-hmm. <laughs> okay that's like <laughs> you being fit actually knew things but apparently you're a moron so i put icy hot on it not think anything of it problem was Oof. it was summer 
So at so, first it was nothing, but as my I think balls, he's saying that he's free balling it. As my balls started going a little lower, <laughs> it's fucking hit the side of my leg, and all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> I was just walking around. Fuck, I was at work. I'm just fucking like smacking the side of my leg, like trying to like. Oh man! It's like, what do I do to get my balls off the side of my leg? And my coworkers like, what are you talking about? And I explained to <laughs> what I was going through. So anyway, back to Mr. Back to milk. Back to milk chugger. So the seller. The sellers found out about Re, uh, Rosa's thirst-quenching venture when they looked over video footage from a security camera hidden inside the house. Rose had apparently not asked the sellers if he could drink the milk, nor did he offer to replace it. That's a faux pas. On the final, I, don't, I also want to know when the picture of this article's from because milk is only three ninety-nine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, uh, side, side note. Did he drink out of the carton or did out he out of the pour- carton? Oh, okay. Oh. All right, all right. Okay, if he poured himself a glass, that's you know, different. I don't think this would be a discussion. Yeah, maybe there were no glasses. Maybe they left this out of the article that the fucking the husband or the wife was just like, all of a sudden pulled out a carton of milk. Was like, yo, you just got milk, and he had to, <laughs> the challenge was he had to chug it afterwards, like it was a smearing off ice. They they milked just playing them. devil's advocate here. <laughs> On the final day of the house's showings, the sellers asked Rose if he had anything he wanted to share with them. <laughs> he allegedly replied, the milk, according to the consent order. The sellers then barred Rose from ever returning to their property and subsequently releasing the, uh, released the footage of him drinking the milk online. Other uh. other clients also dropped Rose as their agent. What? Rose claimed the behavior was out of the ordinary and was due to him taking a new medication that made him thirsty. He also claimed was to have Molly? been under stress. <laughs> <laughs> the, the consent order refi- uh, revealed Rose had agreed to pay a $20,000 fine on top of a $2,500 enforcement expense. That's fucked up. But did they reimburse the cost of the milk? I, I hope, yeah, it, I would, hope it's enough. Would they have fired him if he would have like, yo, here's like six bucks. <laughs> and honestly, fuck it, fuck it, I'm not breaking a 20. Here you and go. also, it's just <laughs> like, yeah, he fucking gunned all the milk, but he saved me five grand on that house. Like, fuck yeah. Like, I don't care if she wants to drink my milk. <laughs> Man knows how to move a listing. That's what I'm saying. Kitch- kitchens and bathrooms sell houses, sweetheart. <sighs> People are just so fucking picky anymore. I'm going to tell you, Tom. I don't know. I don't like that they, I don't like that people are resorting to gotcha. Uh, yeah, gotcha tactics with the security it's like, yo, camera. You had a, also, you had a bad encounter with a guy. Fair enough. You don't want to deal with him. Cool. But why you got to fucking go blasting his shit all over? The, I, Tell yeah. your friends. That's fine. But to every other person that you're fucking with his livelihood just because he drank your well, milk. Yeah. You've got to do one or the other. You either take, you either bring it up and like, hey, yo, what the fuck, or or you just blast him online. Yeah. You, you can't sue somebody and blast them. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's salt in the wound. That's fucked up. You fuck my li- livelihood. You put like you put me on blast. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be funny if the guy like was it. like, "Look, I'll pay whatever restitution you feel you need from me, but you're signing an NDA about me drinking the milk." All right. I, I, you got to think of all like of all like <laughs> on the low tier shit. And again, it's not that it's not disgusting to drink out of somebody else's milk carton. Yeah. It's, yeah. But as far as like realtors doing shit, possibly realtors possibly doing shit in your house when you're not there. Yeah. That's got to be real low on the fucking bar. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, damn well they're baiting in every fucking room. <laughs> or let alone if he leaves a turd in the toilet or something yeah. like bad. Which you know? apparently happens all the goddamn time. It has to. There's no way in hell there hasn't been a realtor that's fucking taken a fucking growler in somebody's bathroom. <laughs> I did remember. I do remember. Uh, <laughs> Clog the toilet. <laughs> I do. I do remember reading one recently where uh, somebody did like they had an open house, and they had to like try and track down the person who absolutely clogged the fuck out of the, somebody's toilet, and like ruined their entire plumbing. Like the house had to, uh, like the the like it had to go to the street kind of thing. It was that bad. That sounds See, like a toilet paper issue. I remember my old man moved down to Lewis. Oh, this is probably mid to late nineties, and uh, it, the the whole like development was being built at the same time. Is this place? Well, I shouldn't gab out his address on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, like the whole development was being built, and he had bought a house in there. So we went down to go see it. It was me and like three of my friends, and so it was this all unfinished houses. In this huge, like, gate, gated community and mm-hmm. thing. We definitely took shits and toilets that had no <laughs> running water. <laughs> That's just funny. for funsies. That's pretty funny. You guys pulled the jackass? Dude. The, the, the fucking, uh... We found a nail gun 
and we found those weird ass strips of nails where they're all glued together. Mm-hmm. We're just like blowing it into the walls and shit. The fact that you and like eighty percent of your friends from the nineties are still alive is a fucking. I think out of the five I did it with, maybe me and two other guys are still alive. Let let let's strike that one from yeah. the podcast. <laughs> so sixty percent. The opioid crisis is no laughing matter. <laughs> It's like, nah, one had cancer, one got hit by a car. How about a, ch- uh, a chicken crisis? Oh, no. So, <laughs> British Airways fed KFC chicken a leg each on a 12-hour flight to London. A leg? Yes. Ugh. It was not originally on the menu, but one chicken leg from KFC was all that passengers on a British Airways flight got on a 12-hour flight to London due to a catering snafu. Mr. Ben Schl- Schlappig, <laughs> who wrote about what happened, said British Airways Flight 252 was about to fly out of Providenciales. Oh, in the oh. Turks and Caicos, a British overseas territory in the Atlantic Ocean. When its crew learned it had a, a catering problem, the plane's catering carts were not properly chilled, so all the food meant for the 12-hour flight to London had to be thrown out. After the plane landed in Nassau for a stopover, the crew arranged for alternative catering. Several buckets of chicken from KFC. What I see no problem here. All I'm hearing about this is, yeah, maybe British Airways dropped the ball, but mm-hmm. the colonel fucking picked that thing, <laughs> picked the rock right back up again, <laughs> yes, and fucking hit a three with it. You know? Both, both business class and economy passengers got the same meal, fried chicken. Can we agree that if they had have stopped... In the South, churches wouldn't have done them like that. It's true. I don't think so. Or Zaxby's. Or at least the fucking Popeyes, for Christ's sakes. Bojangles? Pop- not a chance. Yeah, like, yeah, look. Bojangles. Bojangles like, look, is the one I meant. You gotta at least give them a thigh leg combo. <laughs> you at least gotta give them that. Like, I understand you're not gonna give each one of them a chicken breast, right? <sighs> no, but they're give not them, crazy. But give them like a thigh leg or thigh wing thing. Just do that. An Instagram video showed little, flight attendants holding... KFC buckets and handing out chicken legs to passengers on business class. A Twitter post, meanwhile, showed a lucky passenger with two pieces of chicken. Fuck yeah! Those yep. on did, did they fuck them up with sides too, or a yeah. biscuit? Anything? Do- doesn't say. Those on board the plane were understandably upset. Laughable. Why? U- user keeping up with Sogmanian said on Twitter: People with medical conditions left without any food or proper refreshments. On Instagram, where's oh. underscore Wally27 un- remarked, British Airways are right up there with budget airline, begging with the letter R that I refuse to fly with. Oh, be- begging? I think that should be beginning with the letter R that I refuse to fly with due to atrocious customer services. Another described the incident as an absolute disgrace, asking, how do you forget catering for a 12-hour flight? Well, if he knew any better, he would know that the refrigerator was out. Others, though, were more forgiving. At least an alternative was provided in the circumstances, and I'd imagine some further sort of compensation would have been doled out. Chief Waka Waka said on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to him. (laughs) Mr. Schlappick, the travel writer, said, British Airways actually deserves a bit of credit, even if it wasn't a great experience for passengers. I can't imagine any passenger would have preferred to have their flights delayed by several hours or even canceled over food. So trying to find some alternative while minimizing the, the delay seems like the best option. But he said KFC, despite its finger-licking-good chicken, would not have been his first pick either. All right. Granted, KFC stinks. All right? I don't With know how... capital S. I don't know how it is overseas. I don't know. But I know it stinks. This is a, but I know this what is else a Bahamas is, KFC, But you too. know what else is even worse? British food. Agree. Hard agree. It's a fucking war crime. Yeah, so... You don't colonize half of the world to use none of their spices. Yeah. It, whereas KFC has how many different spices on it? What's their little ad slogan? Uh, 11 herbs and spices? That's yeah. it. I, th- I don't know why I was thinking So it's 10. like, look, do you want something that's just seasoned with salt, or do you want something with 11 herbs and spices? I mean, honestly, if it was between regular, like, English food and KFC, I'd be like... I'll take the colonel. Dude, it all goes back to the Indian food. The British colonizing Absolutely. India. Yeah. It's the best Indian food in the world, the the, the Indian, food, Indian food that we're familiar with, of course. is found in London. Of course. Chicka Tikka was, uh, was an, is, yeah. is an English dish. Yep. Right. You figure they would learn about turmeric, but no. No, God forbid. No. They, they want their cold meat pie. 
Yo, and I'll fuck up a meat pie, but yeah, yo, you gotta, you still gotta season that meat. Yo, I fuck with, saying. I fuck with the beans on toast kind of, but that's about as far as I'll go. Mm. Uh, there, there, uh, there was an Instagram or a Twitter account called Footy Scram. Uh, that was uh, they're just kind of calling out a lot of uh, a lot of stadiums in England for just the absolute no. dog shit that they serve. I was hoping it was a fetish site of somebody just eating beans off a of foot. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking train of thought. Holy shit! There are, it was a footy scran. Yes, uh, footy scran. Sorry, so uh, but it, it, I mean it. Le- it still looks generally better than like half the bullshit that they serve in any of the U.S. fucking stadiums. Well, they're just dogging stuff from like uh, football stadiums over there. Oh yeah, yo, yeah, stadium I mean, be- food over here. Honestly, yo, I dare you to find a better like a better local hot dog than the fucking Philly stadium. I mean, at least you got chicken pizza, you know, like we're, yeah. worst case scenario. I mean, I mean, you're paying through the ass, but yeah. It's, honestly, I never had a problem with Philadelphia Stadium food, ever. Granted, I also have an iron gut and I'm fat as fuck, but... <laughs> I don't think you have a problem with any food. <laughs> that is not true. I am allergic to mushrooms. How the fuck is anybody allergic to mushrooms? No clue. It gives me hives. Uh, that stinks, man. Yeah. There's so what many... It sucks is I want to shroom. Yeah. I don't care about eating I want to just get high with them, on them. You should do the chocolate. That's what I plan to do. Mm-hmm. I got. You should just do a half a tab of acid instead. Hmm. If I had the time, I would. I, is the time difference really that much between them? It seems. I don't to know. Me I don't acid, know about mushrooms. It seems to me acid lasts hella long. The last time I did acid. Oh, it, it, it's an absolute fucking. I don't say it's day, a day ruiner. ruiner. Yeah. It, it, you're at least taking the right. You know, start mid afternoon. Yeah, you should. You're, you're looking at at least ten hours, I think. And I've heard that the on the outside. To be fair, if like I was six. Okay. To be fair. You're taking shrooms in a day. You really making plans after that? I haven't done shrooms since middle school. I haven't done acid since high school. So, yeah, just I don't have the time for it. I did. I was high on acid. No, that was angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was uh, coming off of dust on Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, I don't remember. When did you take it? Fucking 7 a.m.? No, like, cause you know, like when you're like off for Thanksgiving, you're off, and like your friends, are like, let's go meet up and hang out in the beginning of the day, and we'll fuck around. Then you, everybody goes home and eats their dinner. So I did that, and I, when I got home later that night, it hadn't worn off yet, so my depth perception was all fucked. People are passing me shit, and I'm just like reaching past it. People are like, "What the fuck is?" I'm like, "No, I'm fine, man. I'm good." <laughs> And then I just fucking hung in the corner and just eating, like, oh, a little fucking fat meat. I mean, m- most people just, you know, take a walk with their cousin and go smoke weed. A well, cousin walk. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is Delaware, buddy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Is that empty? <laughs> yes, it is. I'll take it. But, uh, yeah, I, that was the last time I fucked with Angel Dust, too. It wasn't just straight Angel Dust. In my defense. It was gay Angel Dust. <laughs> it, was, it was homosexual Angel Dust, and that's why I love PP now. No, uh, it was just laced weed. And just like I was hard to read, go up and downstairs, reach for things, take things. Man, I especially growing up from Brookside, everybody used to fuck with me. Just like I've always been a drug coward, honestly. Like yeah. you know, I was like even smoke smoke of weed was too spicy for yeah. me to a certain point. Um, mostly until my adult years, but yeah. uh, you know, it's like they, everybody always used to fuck with me as a teenager. Like, oh yo, you know we lace this shit right? <sighs> it's like, it's like nobody fucking does. Yeah, it. that's mean. We only we only figured it out by accident. Because <laughs> it, it burns different. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't it smell crazy too? It, it, it kind of had like, was I don't know how to explain it more. It kind of like pops when you light it. Mm. It just like something's like popping in the weed while you're smoking. You're like, that's weird. That's concerning. Then all of a sudden you're like, uh oh. <laughs> this isn't fiberglass. Yeah. No, I was a drug bitch too because uh, everybody's like, oh dude, like you'd be fucking so funny smoking weed and shit. But every time I would smoke weed, I would just get tired. Oh yeah, I mean that's how it is with me. And just like. Mm-hmm. I don't smoke weed mm-hmm. in front of yeah. people. I don't smoke weed. To at my all. employer, I don't smoke weed at all. Yeah. <laughs> Alleged. Alleged. Employer. I don't fuck weed at all until I get my fucking shipment in the mail of edibles coming this Thursday, baby. Have you been to uh, Maryland yet? Have I been to Maryland? Once uh, or for, twice. For drugs. For, <laughs> Once or twice. For, for drugs. No, 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 no. I am new to the edible game. Okay. Uh, like I'm a recent. Oh right, convert. I did see. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm I a recent see, convert. I did see when you took 25 milligrams. Yes, uh, I did actually recently <laughs> kill uh, my 
with drugs. I I, uh, I accidentally <laughs> oh, dosed. Oh, that makes the killing better. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I accidentally dosed. Uh, I thought it was a great idea after a day of drinking with a couple people. Uh, my my um my wife's cousin and her husband, who's one of my best friends, came down from New York City. Um, and uh, we would gotten done drinking. <laughs> like, I am. <laughs> got 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 the uh, got done drinking most of the day, and yeah. I was like, okay, like uh, you know, let, let's take some edibles. Everybody, you know, watch some beef and butthead. You know, unwind. And sure. then, party to and then two people started getting sick, and then we finally ah. looked at the the uh, the bag itself, and it was forty milligrams. Oh man! That's and a lot. Uh, look, I, I'm a small guy, you know, I'm yeah. a little half tier, but you know, like, kind of put me under. The first time I tried edibles, it fucking ruined my day. Um, I got a call from uh, a good buddy of ours, Brent Lafferty, saying, "Oh yes, Shout hey man." And it was me, me, him, and Len Carmichael uh-huh. were all going to go and meet up with Matt down in Maryland, and then we were all going to go to Atomic Music. None of this happened. I was going to go just because I wanted to hang out, because Brent was just like, I'll pick you up if you want to hang the fuck out. I was like, yeah, let's go. And he's in there, he's like, yo, you want to do some edibles? I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, I'll fucking try it. I don't give a shit. I don't have anything to do today. And he hands me this little cookie about yay big. Yep. And, uh... He's, he wasn't thinking handing a fat man a cookie that big. He didn't say, hey, break off a tiny piece and See, get it I back. See, I would hit you, yeah. I popped that whole fucking thing Absolutely. in my mouth. And I was in and out of consciousness. The <laughs> entire, I got to Atomic Music because that was like from where we were was probably about maybe like an hour or so. And I get into Atomic and I walk in the front door. Immediately to the right is a, a guitar cab. And I kind of just posted up on there and was just like this. And I was like... Can we go yet? And everybody's just like, we've been here for five minutes. I'm like, it's been like seven hours. Like, no. <laughs> and then we all like went out to eat after. We came back to Delaware and shit like that. And I was just like, I got to go. I got to go home. I got to go home. And I fucking vomited right up into my house, right upstairs, and just went to sleep. So at the at the risk of my wife watching this, because she absolutely will. Yeah. She's going to listen to the whole thing, I'm sure. Shout out to her. What's up, girl? Thank you, honey. Uh, I was talking to you. Um, <laughs> Aw. No, the first time I ever did edibles, uh, she went to art school, so she is, of course, a little bit more versed in this. Meanwhile, I just, again, just generally like to drink a little bit. Yeah. So same. just a random Sunday afternoon, uh, you know, both ate an edible, like a very small dose, and uh, sit there, you know, decided to put on Rush exit stage left. <sighs> <laughs> Finish the story. That's like everybody's reaction to the, to the start of the story. So... Uh, we get like an hour. We get like an hour in, which is too much rush for everybody, but me apparently. <laughs> and she just she just rolls over and she's like, you know, I, like I think I just need to take a nap. I'm feeling really fucking high. I need to take a little bit of a nap. I'm like, yeah, all right, have yeah. fun. Another, I've been, you know, again, I've been drinking all day. It was the first time on yeah. edibles. Took the exact same amount. About a twenty minutes later, she rolls over and looks at me with the only time I've ever seen her with this with an actual pained expression on her face. And she's like, you need to turn this off. The notes are being played in a square. <laughs> in her defense, she would have said the same thing stone sober. <laughs> Probably. She does not she's like, like Rush. They are Canadian. Turn this off. <laughs> right now. So next thing I know, she's, she, you know, she's like, I, I, I like I start to laugh and I realize it's like, oh no, she's actually having a really, really fucking bad. She time. starts cracking her knuckles, <laughs> sharpening a box cutter. <laughs> she could not if she had tried at the time. Uh, but so she rolls her back over for another twenty minutes, and next thing I know, she you know, she needs to go upstairs and uh, you know, as as one does when they've had too many edibles and just, you know, winds up yeah. uh, in the bathroom, you know, not having a good time getting sick. Yeah. And again, this is the first time I'm ever on edibles and I have to watch her just like stone out of my mind. It's like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I had just like, am I gonna, like, I, like I, I'm too high to take care yeah. of you right now. Yeah. I just had that one horrible experience from Brent and then, uh, uh, Marty, Marty Shay. I'm going to give his name out. Cause he doesn't give a fuck. He's a woodland traveler, but, uh, <laughs> we were out, uh, Kansas priest was out a couple, was it a couple weeks ago? And we were playing a show down in Baltimore, and we were coming from New York, so we were there super early. And uh, we had time to kill. He's like, I just stopped at the dispensary. You want a gummy? And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Yeah, sure. We're not playing tomorrow. Let's do it. And we were already, me and uh, Evan were already killing pictures of Sam Adams. 
And so I just popped one. And the show hadn't even started yet. Then as soon as doors hit and people started rolling in, the edible kicks in. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> and people are talking to me. I'm just like looking. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? Like, they're like talking and I'm like just nodding. Then I'm realizing they're waiting for a response from me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Just like that. I just kept doing that over and over again. We are yeah. we go to, we, we play and... I swear to God, like, I I had to have been off time, but they said I was fine. But I was like, this part's over too fast. And they're like, no. I'm like, that part was over too fast. You played it too quick. They're like, no. I'm like, yeah, you did. You played it too fucking quick. I saw footage. We played perfectly fine, but I, everything was just going super slow for me. So he gave me another uh, gummy for the ride home. I ended up saving it for the next day. And the next day I had nothing to do except sit on my ass at home. So I popped it, it was a 25-er, and just sat and played Fallout all day. And best experience ever. Hell yeah. You just, said, you said what, it makes video games better. It does. Which, which, which Fallout? Four. So I've been playing, I, I think I'm like 50 hours into uh, 76 in like a month. No, in like three weeks. I have just... I, mean, I, have, I have a problem. I just started... <laughs> uh, I've always been a fan of it, but I've never played... I originally had never played the early ones. I started with three, like a lot of people. And I went back out. Because I had been, eventually after that, I bought the first two for PC. And I was like, all right, I'm going to play every single one of the games in order. And I have just made it to four. I have 76, but I've never played it. So that's coming after I finish four. I've never played a single Fallout game. Well, stay away from one and two. They're a little tough to get through. Why is that? Because they're, they're it's very dated. That's fun, um, but it's date. They're also kind of like the isometric as opposed top to... Top-down. Yeah, like yeah. the kind of top-down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not... Like the original Grand Theft Autos. Yes. A little bit, yeah. Yes. But just, they're hard, too. It okay. took me a while to But turn-based on top of that, so, yeah. yeah. Like the old Final Fantasy games, you know? Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, yeah, 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 like that. But, yeah, so I just got the four on that, and that's so... But, dude, on edibles, I was just loving it, dude. You just look up. You figure, like, I've been playing for, like, six hours. You look up. 20 minutes. 45 minutes. You're like, nice. fuck yeah. It's still 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's go, baby. That's sick. You want to do another story? Yes, do. So. Because uh, apparently time also slowed down right there when I told that awfully long and boring <laughs> story. <laughs> what a zilch I am. You sent me this story. Mm. I couldn't believe this girl's last name. Oh, yeah. That one. Taylor Shabiznis. <laughs> <laughs> gives a sick description of allegedly dismembering, sexually abusing her lover's body. The this w- article is a mortician song come to life, the, and I'm here for it. The Wisconsin woman accused of decapitating her lover during a meth-fueled escapade gave a sick description to investigators. There's that key word there is the meth fuel Of how she dismembered him and sexually abused his corpse at the time her trial heard Wednesday. Taylor Shabiznis, 25, offered up the disturbing details in a filmed interrogation soon after she allegedly choked her 25-year-old boyfriend, Shad Therian, to death with a... Shad? Shad, S-H-A-D, with a dog like collar. Like a fish? Yes, like a fish. He deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I was sucking and cutting at the same time, she said in the video, which was played to, j- to the jury during Wednesday's proceedings. I liked it. I didn't know what to do. Uh, Apparently you did. Shabiznis, who could be seen laughing at various points throughout the interrogation, added that her lover's head was allegedly the first thing I took off, and she was very excited about abusing his corpse. Green Bay Police Department Detective David Graff, who was amongst uh, those who to interview her, testified Wednesday that the alleged killer had copped to initially choking her boyfriend as foreplay, because, but she enjoyed it and wanted to see what would happen. Now, after hearing this story, just take one look at her. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put it in a post. Hell yes. <laughs> Shabiznis then allegedly confu- conf- uh, confessed to cutt- cuddling her boyfriend's headless corpse Aww. in the wake of a grisly slaying. She described how she had sexual contact with the body in terms of playing with his penis. Also, she described that she had a dildo that she placed into his mouth and that she had also cuddled the body, the detective testified. Prosecutors say have said Shabiznis used the dog collar to strangle Therian 
at the Green Bay home she shared with her mother before she sexually abused him and then dismembered his body with kitchen knives. Therian's severed head and penis were later found by his mom in a bucket in the basement of the home, jurors previously heard. Shabiznis is charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. Investigators... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a whole town overrun with zombies. <laughs> Investigators subsequently discovered parts of Therian's body spread throughout the basement, including his torso, which had been emptied of, his organ, of its organs and had his foot shoved into the chest cavity. She business is charged with... Yeah, she charged legoed with that motherfucker, dude. She did. And foot and footed <laughs> and torsoed. I saw what you did there. I liked it, too. In February, she attacked her former attorney in the middle of a court hearing before a deputy having wrestled her to the courtroom floor. Oh. Brown, count, Brown County City uh, Circuit Judge Thomas Walsh ruled in March that she business was competent to stand trial after that same attorney had entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity on her behalf. In what fucking alternate universe is she sane enough to stand trial? There's a... Uh... I, I mean, it, like, there's very ra- very rarely is do I hear a news article where you could just sum it up with Mortician Song. <laughs> yeah. I, there's really nothing else to say. That was a, Holy that was, shit. That was a, an average length article. There's, Two words. There's Two words yeah. this man summed it up. She Mortician Songed him. Yes. But uh, there's uh, footage of her, I, I guess it was reading off the list of crimes uh, while she, her and her lawyer are there in, like, in the courthouse. And she's just like giggling. Yeah, like hiding her mouth and kind of like looking off to the side like that, and just like she's <laughs> smiling ear to ear. She's not laughing, but you can definitely tell she's smiling. She was one of the kids. She, she heard dildo and just started crying. She, she broke. She's one yeah. of the kids. Yes, the, she did the SNL break in fucking court. She's she one. Had, of, she's she, one of the kids she, she in class. Like, who, she put his like foot in his chest cavity. She's like, <clears throat> yeah, I did. She's <laughs> one of the kids in class who laughed at the penis game. Yeah, exactly. Or someone's like doorknob penis, you know. and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun game. <laughs> just, just yell it as yell loud penis. as you can, <laughs> or who can who can yell louder than your friend? Yeah, the penis thing was fun. Is still funny now. Where? Where's the best place? Like golf w- course? No, we used to, when I was still working at Shoprite, we would do shit like that on really <laughs> slow nights when there's no one in the store. Like I'd yell from the meat department to the guy in the dairy, and it would just be like dick and balls, and he would just like. <laughs> And we had uh, the phones in all the departments yes. where you could like that communicate back shit. and forth. But <laughs> us and the guy in the dairy and I think the bakery, there was no cameras inside, only out in the in the aisles. The customer so section. on our phones were inside, so we could just go in there and just like <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> and it'll go to the loudspeaker and no one could like say who did it so we couldn't get in trouble for doing it. And we would just do it like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just, and just if you were shopping at the, the shop right over in Newport, you'd start like at least two or three times a shopping trip. That's great. Hilarious. I was definitely old enough to know better, but still funny young enough well. to not give a fuck. I think about it now in my forties <laughs> and I'm still laughing about it. It mean, it's I mean, still funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yelling penis, like if somebody was, if you're at work, you're at the, <laughs> if you're at the fucking bank and one of the other tellers is like penis, it's like <laughs> you wouldn't laugh. I would laugh. And I guarantee you, eight people in line would also be like, <laughs> "That teller just said penis." <laughs> I have to. Ass- I have to assume you're like in a cube, like an office off to the side, though. Uh, by now, so it, at this point, I am actually in. in commercial- oh wait, you're yeah, yeah. I'm back office guy. Uh, <laughs> do I have stories? Uh, none of them are the penis game. Oh, I, I have not vetted any of my old stories uh, that I what I may or may not be able to tell. Um, yeah, don't get yourself in trouble. Yeah, don't get yourself in trouble. Yeah, no. He does not work at a bank. <laughs> Fucking fixed it. <laughs> Easy. Dude, we're really good at this. I'm, really, I'm good, dude. And Tom definitely doesn't work at a place that's next to the post office in Newport. Uh, speaking of Tom and work. Oh. Ooh. Back to my wife. She did ask. She asked me. You know, who, uh, who, I who, worked with her. You did. And uh, she, at is, the, the, she has the, asked me not to say. The, the, you the can place. say it. The one place in Wilmington. Yes. I know what she's talking Might, about. May or may not be a marketing place. Was. Was. I think. Allegedly. <laughs> but she, as soon as I said your name, she, you know, she, she looked and she's like, oh. Mm-hmm. But she did ask me not to say. She said I could beat around the bush. Oh. 
That job. Oh, I'm sorry, I may be mixing up conversation. That oh. job. That job that I worked at at some point. It was landscaping. That's why she was beating a bush. <laughs> Indeed. It was the only place I've ever, um, when when my car was parked on the street outside, it was the only time my car's ever been broken into. Brag. But I See, I was going to say the only time I've ever come close to actually beating a man with a baseball bat has to do with that job. We interesting. May have, we may have to cut that. I, <laughs> nobody knows what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. Just bleep out baseball bat so it sounds like he's saying something way worse. This also I was c- beating guy with a this also could be. Oh, I know what to do. I'm in a black metal band. Let's not bleep anything out. The people can't fucking can't actually say. Yeah, yeah. that's not what he said. Yeah, seriously. Um, no, just up your cred, dude. I I with the wrong people. Put some more bullets in your belt, dude. I on purpose. I don't leave my car locked Ooh. most of the time because I would much DM rather me on Instagram and I will tell you <laughs> where he works. I don't leave anything in my car. Now, did like, you know, if you ever see one of the, you know, any stickers with, like, you know, gun stickers or anything like that yeah. on somebody's window, you know you, you can legally break into those and get a free gun? <laughs> <laughs> does that, I never thought of now, that Now, does that also apply to baby on board stickers? <laughs> you can get a baby. Yeah, can we get a want, free baby? I mean, aside from Casey Anthony, who's going to want a baby, though? She didn't want a baby. That's why she got in that mess in the first place. And exactly. Maybe she wants to go in for round two. <laughs> Speaking... Of Evil Tits alumnus. <laughs> we have an Evil Tits update. We do. Are you aware of the Evil Tits there, Bill? I'm not. We have a segment called Evil Tits. It's about Wonderful. women who do some pretty heinous things. And we determine their tits are good enough to us for to forgive them. And this person, I think, passed the test. Did she or did, or did we give her a no? I want to say... I think we gave her the crazy, probably great fuck pass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she was a doomsdayer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We definitely gave that that head was too fucking good. Yeah. Speaking of which, I may have some good homework for you guys for Ooh. another, another, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk off. Ooh, off camera, okay. You know. Yeah. I might have somebody, somebody that'll uh, be a good, uh, you know, layup for this. Nice. So, Lori Vallow, Daybell. Was just I think yesterday, yesterday or the day, day before, before yeah. whenever it was sent. Was well, she was finally sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her two children and the conspiring in the murder of her husband's first wife. Mm-hmm. Idaho mother Lori Vallow Daybell was sentenced Monday to life in prison without the possibility of parole after her conviction earlier this year in the murders of her two children and for conspiring in the murder of her husband's first place first wife. Yeah. Valo Daybell received a sentence of life in prison for the murders of each of the children, 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Valo, as well as conspiracy to commit the, commit the murder in the death of Tammy Daybell, the first wife of husband Chad. Those sentences w- to, are to be served consecutively. The judge ruled with two additional life sentences and a sentence of 10 years for grand theft to be served concurrently. Now, that's what she looks like as of now. A jury in May found her guilty on all charges, including two counts of first-degree murder. Yes, I just said that. Tylee and JJ <laughs> brought so much life and light into this world, Colby Ryan and Tylee, JJ's older brother, said in a victim impact statement read by prosecutors on Monday. What does somebody named Colby know? Uh, only, only cheese. <laughs> well played. Uh in, uh, d- in determining the sentence, Judge Stephen W. Boyce said he weighed the defendant's lack of a prior criminal record, the single most mitigating factor in the case. He said, but noted now she stood convicted of the most serious charges and showed no remorse. So wait a minute. It's like, oh, she killed three people in one swoop. It's like, yeah, but she's never done it before. She didn't have a prior. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the fact that she showed no remorse, he was like, ah, like she stole that. a car. Daybell on Monday denied having killed her children and cited religious texts and belief. She said she had spoken to Jesus, her children, and her husband's wife after their deaths. Oh, she did deaths. that shit. She oh, did yeah. that shit. And said they were extremely happy and extremely busy in heaven. Jesus, Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case, Vallow Daybell said. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from med- um, uh, medications happen. You know what really pissed me off about what I just heard? Not about any of the kid death or anything. No that accountability? Shit. No. 
the fact that she said they're busy in heaven. Now, <laughs> if they're busy, how's it heaven? True. If you're in heaven, don't you want to just be chilling? Nah, sometimes I like being what, busy you go up with there cool they, shit. They give you fucking chores? I mean, you're ass. never busy doing cool shit. Yeah. It's always shit you don't want to be doing. You don't, yeah, if you're busy doing cool shit, you don't really call it busy. You're like, Yo, oh, no, I'm no, I'm cool. What's up? It's like, yeah, I'm really busy playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, no, <laughs> I'm currently playing Dungeons and Dragons. You don't say you're busy doing it. So I'm busy jerking off. It's like, no, I am currently jerking off. No, I wouldn't be answering you. Yeah. Dummy. In I his would. ruling, the judge I'm a said, person. I don't believe that God in any religion would want to have have this happen. The children were last seen in September of 2019, and Tammy Daybell died the following month. Valo Daybell and Chad Daybell were married weeks later. In June 2020, law enforcement authorities discovered the remains of Tylee and JJ in Daybell's backyard in Fremont County. He is to be tried separately in April 2024 on felony counts of conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, and two felony counts of destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. Being a pussy hound. He has pled not guilty. This is going to be a hell of an investigation discovery episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's tons already. There's oh, a, there's there's a the great audience. Netflix doc about yeah. uh, Lori, actually. I referred to it in the... I don't remember what episode The guy it is. actually has a uh, a doomsday ministry. Yeah. It's and, it's uh, a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of meat on the bone. Oh, there's a lot story. of meat on the bone. And she, bu- uh, and she bought along on that. She got her brother involved and shit. And that's what led to her killing the kids Mm -hmm. because she's like, oh, if the end of the world's coming, I don't want my kids to have to go through it. So, kids are out. They gotta go. I forget the reason for killing the the cult leader and training guy. I don't remember why they killed his wife other than the fact that, you know... She was in the way. My bitch wife. You know? But, yeah. Uh, They're fun. They're uh, fun people. mm -hmm. Boyce said he believed the state's case that validate... He... He said he believed the state's case that Val Daybell murdered her children to remove them as obstacles and to profit financially, calling it the most evil and destructive path possible. And she justified their killings by going down a bizarre religious rabbit hole, Boy said, and clearly you are still down there. Some people could care less about biblical prophecies. Some people care a lot. Thankfully, in this country, we get the freedom to choose, Archibald said in his opening statement. Archibald? Uh, I think that's guy? I think that's his attorney oh. or her attorney. In the wake of the verdict, Valley De- Valo Daybell's attorneys filed a motion for a new trial. Court records show the state objected and the court ultimately denied the motion. When police returned the next Haters. day, let me see. Uh, when she was staying in um, staying with family in Arizona, this is when they discovered Chad. The search for the missing children unfolded back home. Anyway, well, at first she fucking but, tried to pass off the debt, uh, tell everybody that her brother killed the kids. Uh, well, no, no, no. At first she was hiding that they were dead at all. She wouldn't tell yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. where they were. And then she said it was her brother Alex, and her brother Alex just went in 86. I think himself. I do remember this story. Right. And he was actually a stand up comedian, and he, you can still find it. Um, it's Alex, I forget his last name. I want to say it's Cox, C O X. And he actually has like an eight minute set, like a tight eight minute set. On the YouTube, you can find, it. and it's it's not great. It's not, but it's not awful. Is there any, kid, is there any material about killing kids? Or not yet. This is no. this is maybe about ten years previous or prior to him. I mean, she fucked up first and foremost Whatever. by hiring a lawyer named Archibald. Yeah, no one's been named Archibald no. since. I mean, maybe uh, where was this Idaho? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, still true. Nah, Shidaho. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Don't. No. That's all. No. I, that's all no. I got. <laughs> No. I think it's time to play a game, dude. You think so? Yeah, dude. Would you like to play a game? You want to play a game? I think it's time for Bill to get pissed. Fuck it. Dennis got his hat You're going to go. Around. You're going to go. Go. You're about to get it. Oh, shit. Am I, am I too urban? Sorry. Let <laughs> me looking too urban in a Green Lantern hat? Sorry. I'll never happen again. <laughs> remember, oh, man. Remember what Gene said about your Captain America hat? Oh, he's so, something about me being a virgin. <laughs> he said, I like your Captain America hat. And you go, thank you. And he goes, yeah, it basically says, girls, stay away. <laughs> well, that's actually the, the reason I got it. Girls are gross, dude. It's time for a game, Bill. Ooh. Are you familiar with a game called Is It Euro? I am familiar with Is It Euro. Well, nice. Dennis is going to sum up what it is, just in case, in case this is your first episode. Dennis, 
as anybody who's been a fan of music ever, who's been in bands forever, knows that there's some really shitty band names out there. And a good 80% of them come from over the Atlantic Ocean. Now, we have compiled lists of band names. Well, actually, Tom compiled a list of band names. <laughs> I'll be a participant this time. Nearly a thousand of them. And, yeah, I just did the first three. But, uh, ugh, lost track. Anywho, so <laughs> he will give us a band name, and Bill and I will decide if they, we say, if they are or are not Euro. Now, if they are Euro, and we can narrow it down to country, bonus point. If it's not Euro, and we can name it to either A, the continent, or country, or if it's the United States, even state, bonus point. These are some of the stupidest fucking band names ever. But, to help out somewhat, we can give genre for some of them, not all of them. I have a genre for every one. Okay, so he has genre for every single one. Mm-hmm. I went through. Um, and at the at then later on down the line we take our favorite names from the list and we have the Patreon listening party. Now what's which, that in, what does that entail? Us listening to the the top picks from there and actually listening to the music to see, to see if it's worth. Mm-hmm. And the last one we recorded, oof. Slim Pickens. <laughs> Slim Pickens. But but you do okay we do occasionally find gems. Shout out to Garlic Grinder, Scissor Man, Hamburger Alien. All fucking awesome bands. So these are all names I would have come up with in like ninth or tenth grade. These it's are, possible. Some of these are names that people are coming up in the twenty twenties. So it's pretty fucking bad. I'm not sure that you could outdo Captain Pope Hapton. Captain Pope Hapton. <laughs> or fucking nuclear cummies or Kim Karkrashian. Kim Karkrashian oh. was a fucking good one. Yeah, that is a fucking good one. <laughs> so are you ready to give a try this one? Let's do it. Go. All right. Like, yeah. Your bandmate, Mr. Dost, not so good at this. For $3 a month, you can join the Patreon, patreon.com slash IRR and ILL, and join us in said listening party. It's really funny. You too can catch autism. That's right. <laughs> Did you know autism is contagious? Yeah. So instead of buying two <laughs> bags of wrap snacks, why don't you give it to our Patreon, dude? Mm-hmm. So let's start. This this is a, it's, it's four letters abbreviated, but all capitals. Fuck. So it's an acronym. It doesn't say what it stands for. Oh, boo. Uh, that's too boo. hard. I'm going to say it's not Euro based on that. Okay. I, I feel like at least uh, some dog shit Euro band would at least uh, like make some semblance of a chance, you know, uh, take a shot in yeah. the dark to come up with, you know, what the hell it stands for. It just sounds like some trust fund fucking uh, white kid shit from the West Coast. Let's get some genre mm-hmm. here. What we got? Thrash slash crossover. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. He did say West Coast. That's funny. I said, I, I honestly, I would go. I would. I, I could. I feel like I could narrow it down to county. I don't know <laughs> if it's right this time, but ninety five percent of the time, when you say crossover, thrash, or speed metal, you're looking at either California or Germany. Always one of the two. So I will go opposite side and say Euro Germany. It stands for Fornicators Unidos Contra Los Cusios. Oh, that not definitely Euro. would have fucking helped us. <laughs> not on. Euro. Okay, so <sighs> was I right with LA? Well, that is, is true. depends on your net. So are you Very, sticking with LA as your, I'm, your final I, I, answer? I'm going to stick. I'm going to go for, for bonus points and go for LA. Okay. All right, then I'll go fucking, I'll go obvious and go Mexico. That would be Chile. <sighs> okay. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I, Those sneaky bastards. Mm-hmm. I may have at least gotten a point with it is not Euro. You Yo, did. You did. That's you correct. Did. You did get a point. Grave gravy. Okay, now is grave the gravy? Is it spelled like the actual product gravy, or is it grave like G R A V E Y? Yeah, we got, we, got, we inquiring minds need yeah. to know what kind of gravy it is. Yeah, so it's not like being like silly. Oh, my name's Grave Gravy. Or there, are, there are no spaces. Oh. Capital capital G R A V E capital G R A V Y, and they okay. are death and roll. Ooh, that's fucking euro. Euro. Ooh, you're both wrong. Ah, Ooh. they're not euro. Shao's gonna go fucking UK on that motherfucker. Also, still not euro. Yeah. Oh, t- tagging. Well, we, <laughs> nah, fuck that. We we, we consider we oh, consider yeah. UK European. 
Because we're fucking cool. That's what it so was when not the list Euro, was compiled. Ten bonus points for 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 a Brexit. Uh, a Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Euro grave gravy. Grave Death gravy. Roll. Fuck. Michigan. Hmm. I I can't come up with a better option. Um. That's definitely a Michigan band. <laughs> that's other, fucking spot on. There's other states in um, another country around Michigan, bro. I'm gonna go Illinois. Ooh, another solid one. Dennis was closer. Canada. Fair enough. Right, Where in Canada does it say? Doesn't say. Yeah, if it's Canada. Ontario, I'm right there. Yeah. Chainsaw penis. <laughs> list. No, it's not. Oh. Yeah, put it on the list. All right. <laughs> Actually, no. Put put grave gravy on that list too. <laughs> Indubitably. Um, chainsaw chainsaw penis. penis genre. Obviously, a gore grind band. Grindcore. Okay. Chainsaw penis. Death metal slash crank. It's very childish, so it could either be east coast of the United States or fucking Eastern European. Yeah. Mm. It's a I'll go point. Euro. I'm going okay. not Euro. Euro is correct. Good job, Dennis. Okay, you can still chime in on a guess of where in Euro it is. Belarus. Ooh. Ooh. Is this the country? I, I lose track so. of Europe sometimes. Europe be changing. If dog. I get indicted, they on, do if be. I get indicted on war crimes in the next uh, twelve <laughs> hours, then it's because of Belarus. <laughs> Belarus will take in. Okay, so he's going Belarus. I'll fucking go Hungary. That would be the United Kingdom. Honestly, I've ne- honestly I've never gone Hungary. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. Fucking right. star wipe over the uh, <laughs> fucking Simpson star wipe over the uh, <laughs> over that transition. Gentle tick. T I C or T I C K. I'm T-I-C-K. going not Euro, and I'm gonna go Arkansas. <laughs> Gentle <laughs> tick, not Euro. Not Euro is correct. I will say Gentle Tick is from Japan. Hmm. Bill? I'm sticking out uh, Arkansas. Okay. They are from Russia. Which yeah, side? Right. I'm looking that up now. Eh, fuck, it doesn't matter. We're it's in the capital anyway. province, so the, 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 the Baltics. That's the Euro Well, side. I should have gotten genre on that. What was genre on that? Stoner metal slash sludge. They have stoner metal in Russia? List? That's got to sound Are they like allowed to have shit. drugs in Russia? Yeah. No. No. Oh, damn. So they're like fucking like punk as fuck stoners. Hmm? Oh, Stoner fuck yeah, slash dude. sludge. I'm listening. Yeah, General Tick's probably fucking badass dudes, dude. I'm, I'm hopeful for the list. Okay. Mauled by kittens. Ugh. Not Euro. Hmm. I'm going to go Euro. Not Euro is correct. Mauled by kittens... Genre, please. Brutal death metal. Yeah, all right. Oof. Um, <sighs> Brazil. Mm. I'm going to stay on the continent and go Argentina. Ooh, that would be Japan. Ah! So, yeah. Also very also very on brand for fucking mm-hmm. yeah. Japan. You never see it coming. PCP. Uh, can we can we get an official... Uh, <laughs> you know, say what that one stands for? It's just It's just PCP. Yeah, but I wonder if, like, do they have, like, a def- different acronym for it actually just going as it's PCP? I think it's just PCP. Give me the genre. Death slash groove metal. Ew! <laughs> Ew! <laughs> oh, gross. So that's definitely some shit that I've been, like, playing with Stuck Mojo <laughs> off of Roadrunner Records in, like, 96. Oh, When I hear God. groove metal, I, I, I'm sorry, do we know if this is a current band? No, that's the problem. Sometimes these are old as fuck. Yeah, they, they have to. When I, when I hear groove metal, I immediately think the people that are old enough to like really love Exhorter, and unfortunately Pantera. Uh, you know, just, people that are like, older fucking, than me. Yeah, yeah, fucking weird Euros that just got it, got this shit like in the last three years. Uh, it, says, Dude, it says they split up. Dude, that shit was popping in fucking L.A. and area in New York and shit too back in, in the '90s. Groove metal. Ugh. I would say I do fuck with Exhorter, but. I don't fuck with them or Pantera. Fair Do you enough. still fuck with PCP? <laughs> I have. I the don't ba- currently. The band? I would say Shot in the Dark Euro. Mm. That's fucking Euro. It is not Euro. Oh, fuck. Groove metal. Slash I death. I think LA's too fucking obvious. Yo, fuck it. I'll go with those assholes in Australia. <laughs> That constantly let me down. Shit, that is probably <laughs> good. Those assholes. Uh, oh, when I, again, when I hear groove, I, I, I'm good. Uh, makes you think of infectious grooves? 
Uh, Let's go Oklahoma. We'll Oklahoma. Keep it in the U.S. I'm probably keeping the U.S. too much, but no, the U.S. comes up quite a bit. Not entirely. That would be Napa Valley, California. Uh, see, California and their fucking groove metal. Mm-hmm. That's the shit that gave birth to new metal. It's a gateway drug. Werewolf babies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Genre, please. That would be heavy metal. Ugh, so all encompassing and stupid. Mm hmm. Werewolf babies. Well, they fear werewolves in Europe, so I'll go Europe. Mm. I'm pretty sure they actually have real werewolves in Russia. I'm taking not Euro, and I'm actually going to go Japan again. I have to say, Bill nailed it. They are not Euro, and they are from Japan. Son of a bitch. It's just fucking weird enough, and, you know. I mean, you're already getting mauled by kittens over there, apparently, so. Mm -hmm. Werewolf Werewolf baby's not a a far leap, dude. It's not a far leap. There you go. Ass ache. Ass ache. (laughs) That's definitely not Euro. (laughs) Genre, please. (laughs) Come on. Death metal. (laughs) I was hoping release for some stoner shit, dude. Ass ache. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Euro. Not Euro. Euro takes it. It is Euro. I want to say they are Scottish. Ooh, Scottish. Bill? Asig? Bonus Spain. point? Spain? Ooh. Italy. Shit, that was my second guess. Yeah. It's close. It's, you're, you were closer. There'd be some aching asses in Italy. <laughs> Tra- trash name? Trash, uh... Cra- trash country? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trash Absolutely. identity? Yes. St- still definitely. love fascism very much. There yep. you go. Mm-hmm. You see their fucking hairy ass women? No wonder they're fucking clowning from the <laughs> ass. No. Ugh. Mothman and the Thunderbirds. Mm. Oh, gross. Not Euro. You gotta go West Virginia there. You have to just for the Mothman. Yeah, also not Euro. Any place that has a state fair. So he said West Virginia, so I will go Maryland. Close. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What the fuck do they know about Mothman? That's a stoner band, apparently. Mothman and the Thunderbirds. You don't hear many stoner bands in Philadelphia either. Don't you? That's because none of the ones in Philadelphia are any good. That and all the bands that get stoned in Philadelphia, they're not doing weed. Right. <laughs> They're they're all friends of ours. <laughs> it's true. It's a fucking valid fucking point. <laughs> One of those assholes was supposed to be here today. Mm. Get get better soon, buddy. We yeah. love you. We love you, Jay. Jay Jay couldn't make it today on account of a runny nose. He had a fucking uh, <laughs> account of the sniffles. Yeah, to- <laughs> I, I would love to. I would lo- I would love to call out to the point uh, and nobody watch anybody not watching this on video. I do have a band aid on. I did absolutely take my fucking thumb to a mandolin slicer on Sunday. Oh. The yeah. scariest piece of Christian I have also, also, for the record, I have not, to any credit of any of my friends watching this, I have not stopped bitching about it since, but it has hurt like absolute fuck. Every so. time you run water on it, oh, fuck, dude. I took a top of a the middle finger knuckle off with a mandolin, like, years ago. Yeah. And that thing would not fucking heal nope. for the longest time. Yeah, I, I managed Ugh. to barely nick this, thankfully, but, uh... I, I was gun shy of the of that fucking mandolin for a good like ten years. And look, I mean, the and good look what happens to us. It took me having to buy a new one to actually use one. Again. I, the good news is that the potatoes I made were not good enough to justify using it again yeah. for that. So you know what? <laughs> blood potatoes. These are blood potatoes. I suffered for these. Mm-hmm. You better fucking like them. All right, ready? Uh, Wait, did we figure out ass ache? Uh, they're from Italy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Zonk. Right. Zonk. Is there an exclamation point at the end? No. Is it surf rock? It is uh, thrash slash hardcore. Gross. Non-Euro. I'm going Euro. Non-Euro is correct again. Fuck. And I will go with... Gotta go California again. I'm going Australia. Canada. Mm. Fuck. Probably on the west coast of Canada, though. No, no, we're halfway through. If I gave a shit about their provinces, I'd know. (laughs) Halfway through this list. A billion limbs. That's way too many limbs, guys. (laughs) A billion limbs. That's fucking Euro. That sounds like a prog metal band too. Can I get Death, a genre? Deathcore. Oh, gross. Oh, gross. Deathcore. Uh, I might actually have to rethink my answer. Of I, I actually, I'm gonna say not Euro. No, Euro's got their share. Don't get, don't don't give up hope. I'll go Euro. Fuck. All it. right, I'll stick with Euro. It was the first. Uh, I gotta go first instinct. Yeah. Yo, Russia and fucking UK have some deathcore, dude. They don't. It's good thing you did that. You oh. both get a point. They are Euros. I will go... Hmm. I'm going to take, take the UK. I'll take Russia then. 
Bill nails it again. It is the UK right, indeed. All credit Good to, job. All, all credit to uh, our friend. Nah, all credit to the fucking lousy ass Brits always copying what us shitty Americans do first. Absolutely. We ruined death metal first. <laughs> and then and you assholes door. took our shit from us. Shout I'm out so- to Roadrunner Records circa <laughs> late 90s. Shout out to all the jerbangs. <laughs> Literally. Ugh. Going home in a body bag. Oh, that's just... A lazy it's just name. Sad. That's just a lazy name, actually. It's long. I've had worse uh, band names than that. No, I haven't. I have not had worse. Band <laughs> no, you've names not. They're not on this. These I know. Lists. I've known most of your bands. None of them are that bad. No, I didn't mean. I, eh, yeah. You don't know the ones that haven't come to fruition. I mean, uh, they're not that bad. I was in a band called Dirt, the Dirk Benedict Death Squad. So never mind. Yeah. My first band ever was called the Mall Rats. My first one was called the Porn Flakes. <laughs> That's just funny. Yeah. That's terribly on brand. My yeah. dad my dad was in a band called Rudy and the Begas. Yeah, but now he's the <laughs> fucking touring fucking guitar tech for Deep Purple. Correct. But That's sick. that has nothing to do with yeah, his band, his band pedigree, Enough, though. Yeah, I don't give a shit. He's already on king status. No wonder your parents are okay with us pissing in the fucking yard. That motherfucker hears They're smoke. Trill. That motherfucker hears smoke on the water on a daily basis, dude. And he's like, "Fuck fucking sign." He's yeah. like, "Yeah." And he's angry about like it. Like me. That's sick. So wait, what? I forgot the band name already. A billion limbs. And we discovered they were what kind of, what kind of music? Duh. These are. This is deathcore also. Ugh. All right. Uh, I'll go not euro in this one. I'm going not euro, and I'm actually gonna go straight to Ohio. Mm, they are euros. Oh, so no. So you guys have a chance at redemption. <laughs> How about I take UK this time and you take Russia? <laughs> I'm all right with that. I'll take Russia then. Yeah, I'll take UK. Actually, I'm going to take Germany. Oh, there you go. Mm. All right. If he's going Germany, I will go Finland. You should have stuck with your guess. It was the UK. Ah, fuck me in the ass. Guess what? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We're on going home in a body bag. I'm sorry. No. Bill already got a point for that UK band. We're on going home in a body bag. That would be melodic deathcore. Oh, the worst kind. As opposed to, if you put melodic in front of any genre, it's going to be make it worse. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Melodic bluegrass, melodic. Even ska. melodic music, if you put melodic in front of it, it somehow makes it worse. I mean, there were like three good melodic death metal bands. No, there's not. Stop None playing. of them are in flames. Of course. Stop. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You're you're 100 right on that shit. Uh, okay, going home in a body bag, God, mm, Euro. I'll stick Euro. Euro is correct. Both get going points Going home in a one. body bag, I will go. That's, you know what, I'm going to go back to the UK because I feel like it's just dumb enough to be some, like, low-rent 80 fucking IQ UK band. <laughs> just from, like, the Midlands of UK. I will go <laughs> France. <laughs> Y'all ba- Most bands are about here. <laughs> <laughs> your band is about here I'll go France I'll go France on this Your mama sure does love your death core <laughs> Son <laughs> Talk about a sample opportunity <laughs> Fuck so our, yeah, yeah, yeah. our guesses are where? I said France France I went UK Sweden is oh. the answer yeah, I, I come from so. France Hobo Wizard uh, It's definitely a stoner band right? Doom yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, not Euro. Not Euro. Not Euro is correct. New Jersey. Ooh. Tejas. We don't hear enough New Jersey, honestly. We do when it's slam. <laughs> yeah. When we get the slam bands, it's normally. Shit, I might be wrong. Nah. Um, I'm going to go Texas. You both guess not Euro. It is New Hampshire. It was closer. Yeah. Can that's you think true. of a single band from New Hampshire? I, I can't. can't. I can think of one. Scissor Fight. And the only reason I remember they're from New Hampshire is because they had an album called New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. <laughs> Jesus. Enraged Monkeys. Oh. That sounds very racist. That's Euro. <laughs> uh, I, I, did, I didn't even think about that angle. I will go <laughs> not Euro. You said Euro and not Euro? Correct. Yes. Bill gets the point. Uh, I'm Euros. going Russia. I was going. I was going. I'm to go, going Russia. I was going to go final, Japan. We're on that mold by kittens thing. <laughs> oh shit! You might have. Yeah, we might have actually found the. Uh, so you're going. He's going Russia. I'll go. I'm go. I'm sticking with Russia though. Mm-hmm. What is it? What monkeys? Enraged. Enraged monkeys is from Greece, Germany. Mm. 
Oh God, they definitely don't mean it in a good way. <laughs> they <laughs> they don't mean the primates. <laughs> do not mean it in a good way. There's definitely a smirk when they say that name for the wrong reasons. <laughs> we're getting we're getting there. There's a lot of animals today, honestly. Dude, Klaus cannot well, be at trusted. Least, at dude. least we've broken the at least we've bro- broken the the Japanese uh, trend so far. I don't know, man. They have a way of coming back, dude. Mm-hmm. Didn't you see the end of Oppenheimer? Sorry, that'll never happen again. That'll never happen again. <laughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> Cut that out. Next uh, on the list is the band is called Next on the oh. List. <laughs> That's very threatening. I know. But who's on first? <laughs> Ooh. It's a conundrum. Can I have a genre, please? Grindcore slash death metal. Oh no. That could be anywhere. That's right. Next on the list. That's what makes this game so exciting. I will say not Euro. Euro. It is Euro. Bill Shit. gets another point. All I'm right. going back to Germany. Mm. I'll go back to France. France is correct. Shit. Come yes. With the steel. <laughs> I thought the only fucking grind band out of there was Blockheads. Okay. <laughs> we got five more. Dark SS Prevails. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to go wild. Wild guess. Raw black metal. Oh no. Ah. Oh no. Emphasis on raw. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh shit. Okay, hero. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is too on the nose to go Euro. Like, that's what concerns yeah. me. Oh, it could be a MacGuffin or whatever. Mm-hmm. A McMu- I would take a McMuffin right mm. now. No, that's right, girl. Sausage, Sausage and cheese on a biscuit, man. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Uh, I'm going not Euro. I'll stick with Euro. Not Euro is correct. Fuck! That's definitely you. At- oh. Oh, here's the other thing. There's a lot of racist dog shit. South America's chocolate yeah, racist dog yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's right. There's a lot out there. <sighs> you said in the rules I can go continent. You can go anywhere. For, for not your own. It's country. Country shit. He, um, ma- he, he made a typo with his mouth. <laughs> but there's some, like, obviously there's like some continents where we don't know every single country in it. So you know what? Shout out to a friend down. who has to remain nameless because uh, the internet. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to go Argentina. And also that name, you kind of want to keep him. Well, Argentina is where they found Joseph Mengele. Shout out to the Nuremberg trials. Uh, I will go... Colombia. It would be the Philippines. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrong continent. Mm-hmm. Huh. Asia. Chimp in a box. <laughs> that just sounds like fun. List. <laughs> that just sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, you're not putting fucking best SS awesome <laughs> on there? D- dark SS prevails? Nah. Oh, God. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Look, there's a, there's enough uh, raw black metal out there that actually gets listened to on a regular basis. Uh, we don't need to... We don't need... Uh, we, don't need we don't need to take the laziest of the lazy. Yeah. Chimp in a box. Can I get a genre, please? Thrash slash groove metal. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Not Euro. Not Euro... I'm going to say Australia. Ooh. Mm. I'll go with the easy one. California. They're not Euro. I mean, I'm sorry. They are Euro. What? So you're both wrong. Okay. Crossover thrash, right? Thrash. Groove. Slash groove. Oof. Fuck it. Germany. Mm, That's a good guess, though. I'm I'm right. I said not Euro. I said Australia. They are Euro. They are Euro. Oh, okay. You can just say Austria. Just knock a syllable out. You know mm-hmm. what? Fuck it. Let's go Austria. United oh, Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, fuck us. Mm-hmm. Last three. Oh. If anybody gets this one, I'll be fucking shocked. Side note: Can we get a? Can we get a? Can we get a score? Can we'll we get it there? at the end, buddy. Oh, do you want? I'll, I'll, okay. All I'll say is that it's dead close. Okay, I frequently lose. Days of our lives. Please tell me there's a Z after days. No. <laughs> Boo! Not is there, Euro. Is there a Z after not lives? Euro. No. If there's no Z's in it, I'm going not Euro. No Z's. Not Euro. <sighs> Fuck it. I'll play the odds Euro. 
not Euro, is correct. Fuck. This is depressive black metal. Oof. Oh, Washington State. <laughs> Days of our life. Not Euro. Isn't that where fucking Agalock and all that shit's from? I wouldn't call uh, Agalock depressive black metal, but... Well, it's not I, uplifting. Okay, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's a little b- much of a bummer. <laughs> they rule, but they're kind of a bummer. I'll stick them with Washington State. You know what? In the ballpark, let's go with Oregon. Mm. Like I said, if anybody got this, I'd be shocked. I've never seen it before. Gibraltar. There you go. <laughs> I didn't think that's been a real place since Jesus times. <laughs> I thought once they had that rock there, then that all of a sudden rock. they just forgot about that joint. Nah, the thing about rocks is that they're still there. <laughs> that's true. They do be permanent, them rocks, man. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere, dude. This one uh, Erosion would like a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> Come see me, Erosion. What's up? Catch these hands. My band Erosion is playing Bar 13. <laughs> Not Euro. <laughs> we go on at 2.30. With, with Days of Our, days of days our of Lives. Our lives. <laughs> Presented by Chuck from Bulldog. From oh, shout out, shout Chuck, out to bull- him. He's a listener. I fuck with Chuck, yeah. dude. I miss that dude. I love dude. Chuck. I'd give him a pound. Yeah. I He put on some of the best shows I've been to, honestly. Yeah. In, in Delaware, that is. He put on a lot of Dead and Buried shows towards the end of my tenure. The last two. Okay. Slur, and this is an acronym. Oh, Seventh no. Link and Ultimate Ray. Seventh Link and Ultimate Ray? Yes. R A Y? Yes. Not That not makes Euro. zero sense. Not Euro Japan. That makes no sense. Not Euro Japan. Okay, then I'll go Euro. <laughs> Bill nailed it again. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> It doesn't. I mean, you have to, you, got, you almost points. have to go back to jism right there. Like, so I, they pretty much just cherry picked words that would fit yes. fit the acronym. Exactly. I think they honestly. Did. <laughs> I don't know what what jism stands for. I thought it was gism, or however you want to pronounce it. But it's still an acronym, isn't it? I don't know. Isn't that their name it is. an acronym? Oh, whatever. Who gives a fuck? I'm, right. not, I'm not. You know what? Shout out to Randy or Cheetah. <laughs> True. You I'm also not going to. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to let the listeners tell you what it is. Oh, mm. God. You're going to get sure a lot will. of shit for that. Uh-oh. From, like, three people. I'll just go- I don't give a fuck. We'll just Google it I have, time. No, I have no problem saying that I'm a poser and I don't know what it stands for. Mm-hmm. Last one. The Cosmic Kitten Project. Tell me it's another groove metal band. Progressive metal. Ooh. Ew! The worst <laughs> kind of metal. <laughs> it's almost as bad as power metal. I think progressive groove metal is worse. Ugh. This is just progressive metal. But it's just like flat genre. Like progressive and power metal are two that are like, oh, there's nothing good in those genres. Yes, even Voivod suck my dick. Uh, okay, what is it again? I am not a Voivod fan. We'll, we'll get back to that. Oh, we, ha- we had an experience with Voivod, you and I. We'll, we were we'll, all- get back, we'll get back to that. Yeah. What, uh, what, what's this name? One more time. The Cosmic Kitten Project. Progressive metal. No funky spelling. Nothing. Not Euro. I can't get any more specific than that. But Euro. Definitely not Euro. Not Euro is correct. Fuck. Again. There's no way I'm winning this one. Okay. Cosmic Kittens. I'll tell you right now, Bill ran away with this one. Yeah, he did. Uh, Canada. Mm-hmm. Bill, if you care to guess, just for funsies. <laughs> Don't strain yourself now. Shot in the dark. Let's go back to Japan. That's St. Charles, Missouri. Good. Ugh. So Dennis gets 10 points and Bill wins with 16. With a couple of uh, a couple of aces in the hole with the Japan he did, guesses. Dude. He did have some hole he did ones well. in that shit. Damn, that dude. was another edition of Bill's got to come to a listening party now. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, Bill and I uh, had a shared experience at a Voivod, Voivod you say? show. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. Was, uh, it at Mo- was it at Mojo 13? It, no, I don't remember. It was somewhere in Philadelphia. Uh, it was Voivod Napalm Death. No, that was in Baltimore. Ball K, Baltimore. That was uh, and, not Soundstage. Maybe sound. No. Was Sonar? It, no. It's, it was Auto, Are you Ram, sure what was it? I think it actually might have been Soundstage. It was one of those newer venues that... Uh, I think it was Soundstage. I think it was Soundstage. And um, Black I remember, Crown Initiate uh, played too. Uh, yeah, I missed them. <clears throat> I got there in time for Voivod, then Napalm. 
Voivod bored me to tears. Yep. And somebody shit themselves during True. Napalm Death. True, I did forget about that. It was me. And there was a girl in front of me headbanging with dreadlocks, and the dreadlocks hit my mouth numerous <laughs> times. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, you just smell this wafting smell of just strong shit, and that girl was gone. I, I can't I say for ev- sure she was the shitter, but somebody shit themselves. I, I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's got to be probable, but you know, every moment in your life that's gone downhill since those dreadlocks touched your mouth. Think about that for just a moment. <laughs> like, everybody, like, it, nothing good has happened in either of our lives since that happened. You got to be, you got to be. I remember when like COVID first hit, and uh, people were like, well, "One of the symptoms is you lose your sense of taste." I was like, damn, I wish they were present. I had COVID the night of that Voivod Napalm Death show. Ugh. Because, like, they were just, it tasted like dust. I was like, oh. Uh. The thing is, she was attractive otherwise. I was like, god damn it. Your hair's musty. Mm. It smells like a wet dog. Awful. Oh, yeah, but that, so Bill fucking swept it. All mm-hmm. right. Now that brings us to the fucking, the creme de la creme. Yellow Notebook's coming out. This is a little segment called Is... No, it's not. It's called Is It Your... I was ready to say this. <laughs> Fuck me. Cut that part out. This is 12 of the hardest questions you'll ever be asked. Because no one will ever ask these questions for real. Have this, they been updated now that we're we're only one of us? Uh, have they been One updated? of them might sink a little bit. Okay. But I'm keeping it in because Jay's here in spirit. Fair enough. And Jay already had his own questions. It's so. true. Fair this enough. is your time to shine. Don't block your face too much with the notebook now. Oh, you say I'm pretty. What's up, girl? Now, this actually harkens back to what we were talking about earlier. Question number one. Fallout New Vegas. NCR, Caesars Legion, or the Brotherhood of Steel? Brotherhood of Steel always had the, the cool shit. Yeah, but they were fascist as fuck, dude. Yeah, I mean, so was NCR, though. True. But, I mean, it's also so with Kaiser's Legion. Yeah. yeah I mean, you kind of, you just kind of like, you just, you know, go with the fucking it's coolest which thing brand there. of evil do you want? Exactly. Correct Start. answer, Brotherhood of Steel. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't grow up with fun. You're just like, oh, I'll just get in comas every five weeks instead. <laughs> I finally got him with one, though. Uh, question number two. True or false? Your mom is very nice. True. It is true. You love her quite dearly. And she's a very good woman. I Correct do. I answer. can't wait till she sees that this is completely and utterly fucking embarrassed to me otherwise. Aw. All right. This is a... I don't know how good you are with history. Are you good with history at all? Yeah. Okay, then you, you should nail this. No doubt in my mind. What was the name of the first ape in space? Oh, I don't know that. Send up, sent up by the Americans. I don't know that. Mm, his name was Ham. <laughs> R.I.P. to a real one. Neil Armstrong can suck a dick. I only fucking think about ham. <laughs> you not, fuck ham. Who could blame see you? See what I did there? I only think about ham. Do you take the, uh, the because I'm out? fat? Do, do you fuck? The, do you take the bone out before you fuck ham? <laughs> yeah, because that's the hole I fuck. Excellent. Just need I, do clar- fu- I just need a clarification. Might do fuck the marrow hole? No way, dude. Just need a clarification. I mean, my dick's short, but it's not fucking skinny. All <laughs> short right. People now that. this is the one that's really gonna. This might not hit since Jay decided not to join us because he's too busy doing an appearance at a Make-A-Wish thing as a John Crock impersonator. <laughs> um, does Jay really introduce himself as the dosed with the most that doesn't like to boast? He does not. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> he does that, and he does one of those handshakes where he goes in and goes, woo. <laughs> he's a fucking weirdo. All right. Question number five. Though Wayne's World was a successful film, why did the phrase Psycho Hose Beast not catch on? Damn. Why did it not catch on? Because people... It could be because... Ugh, Jesus Christ. Because people hate fun. No, Duplicable was the correct answer. You hit it right the first time. Good job, buddy. All right. Now, this is a little inside baseball for the three of us, but I don't give a fuck about our listeners in the long run. Unless you're a patron, you can suck my cock. This is in reference to one Garrett Jansen. Okay, we all know Garrett in this room. Hey, buddy. Now, he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. Besides his haircut, what else does he have in common with Korean dictator Kim Jong-un? Love the Boston Red Sox. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) Correct. All right, number seven. This one's just me pandering to you right now. Question number seven. Break down your Warhammer character build. 
Uh, you mean army and uh, like what I do or? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am currently playing Dark Angels. Uh, I run a lot of Terminators. That's about it. Do they have those guns that shoot nails and shit? Or sure. bolts? Yeah, the Storm Bolters. Fuck yeah, dude. Rapid fire uh, two, I think in 24 inches. 100 fucking percent correct dude. answer. I don't give a fuck. Anybody who hears a sentence that all that shit that just came out of his mouth and isn't is like, fuck yes. Is exactly. a fucking jerk off. I don't know what I actually have to double check that because if you guys have any listeners that are, uh, that are, uh, I will playing fight them right now. I will fight those indoor mooks. You know why? Because they're all fucking nerds. That's true. <laughs> I say I don't, as I don't, I'm wearing a Green Lantern hat. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what a, a word of all those words mean, but they're Dude, sa- they sound cool in sequence. They have guns that shoot bolts, like metal bolts. Sweet. That's fucking sick, dude. Is he actually... <laughs> I am actually looking it up. Okay, I don't... I never you... said I was an autistic. <laughs> I don't know. We have an autist on, on staff here. He does all the editing. I'm stimming right now. <laughs> autist. And do you have a result yet? I was right, so I don't even have it. You Fuck don't, yeah, you don't even have to edit it. Don't even ha- edit out his fucking checking it up. I want him to show him with extreme confidence. I have never edited before. It's very scary. <laughs> Let's figure that and just put a shiny <laughs> thing on it. You'd edit it. All right. Now this speaks to what we've been drinking the entire night you here. You edit it. And I know you're a fan of the Were- sil- werewolf killers. I know you're a fan of the silver bullet. <laughs> Did you ever get the cores over whores belly rocker tattoo covered? Uh, I can say with confidence, no, because I never got it in the first place. Uh, I've only, the only part of my to- torso that I have ch- tattooed is the Judas Priest tattoo on my chest. Incorrect. You have cores over whores tattooed in old English font on your stomach. <laughs> we will edit this part of the video out. <laughs> it's a great tattoo. All right. Here we go. Now, this is one just a little fun one, a little for funsies. Question number nine. How many kids do you think are currently stuck in a well? 17. Ooh, very, very close. 16, but I'll give it to you because it's your first time. All right. Now, this one also, question number 10, also harkens back to a thing we were talking about recently on this episode here. Question number 10. Do you think Rush is a good band or are you cool? (laughs) I have never once in my life been cool. Uh, so yes, I love Rush. Oh, that's the first X on the list. I think you're pretty cool and you hate Rush, but you, Jesus Christ, Bill, come on, dude. I'm trying to help you here. All right. This is another thing that I know you're a huge fan of. I give you shit for it, but let's talk about it anyway. Question number 11. What has less instances of scoring a professional soccer match or Beavis? (laughs) <laughs> well, considering Beavis never scored, that's there's your answer. That is the correct answer is what it is. Beavis never scored. <laughs> it says so on his tombstone. Here lies Beavis. He He's never, scored. never, never scored. All right. Damn. That brings us to the pentultimate fucking question. I think penultimate means last one, right? I was trying to show off with a big word, and I think I used it incorrectly. <laughs> but whatever. Question number 12. Finish this E-Town concrete lyric. Pass. Nope. Nope. Just got to gotta try, dude. You got to try new things sometimes, you know what I mean? All right, here we go. Finish this E-Town Concrete lyric. Yeah, yeah, dude looks like a lady. That is correct. What's that sound? Oh, that's a fucking perfect score getting written on his fucking page, dude. I thought it was going to be the sound of yet another Delaware boy getting the E-Town Concrete question right. Delaware as oppo- Kids has never gotten the E-Town song wrong. As opposed to most guests from New Jersey. Uh, I think 90%. I think maybe Phil got it right, but Phil's definitely autistic. So. <laughs> of the musical yeah. type, yeah. yeah. Sleepy Phil definitely got it right, dude. That was gripping inquiries. You did a fucking great job. You got a perfect score. Not a lot of people do that. That's true. Every week. <laughs> now, do we want to we want to do some plugs? Before Plug we, time. Before we get into homework. Plug time. Again. Wait, when's this come out? This comes out. Let's see. The day of this episode today is. Let's see. No, it's not Mike Walsh's birthday. That's in December. Today is is August sixteenth. Okay, then all my shows will be over mm-hmm. by then. How were they? 
I'm sure they're awesome. I played with bonginators. How could it possibly be bad? <laughs> he got bonginated. He got bonginated. Took a bro. 420 pound poop. Went to New Jersey. Got bonginated. <laughs> Go figure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, new Cancer Priest coming soon. EP on a label, a brand new label, as yet to be named. We're getting it on the ground floor. That's how new it is. Yeah, that's pa- all I know so far. Patreon.com/slash IRR and ILL. Bonus episode every week. Uh, let's see. We got Road Pods on there. We got game shows coming up soon. <laughs> Even more. Guess who on Whiskey has been changed due to health reasons to, to play Guess Who on Edibles. <laughs> We're going the healthy route. I know it's hard to look at me and think health, but we didn't want to pickle our livers. Imagine our on surprise, the you whi- know? Whiskey Guess Who has been replaced by Edible Guess Who. So As we sponsored by Uber. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Go puff even. Yeah, exactly. And uh yeah, bonus and uh, is it your listening parties, all that good shit. Yeah. Three bucks a month, direct communication, all that good shit. Yeah. And uh leave us a message if oh, you yeah, feel so inclined. Thing. Give give the me a hot take hotline. Yeah, give us a call, leave us a hot take. Say anything really. Three oh two three one six zero zero nine six. And once I get some actual messages for once, we'll listen to them on the air. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure by looking at social media that Krieg has a new record coming soon. Uh, soon to be announced. Uh, yes, we do have our eighth record, the first uh, full length that I've been a part of, uh, Ruiner, that will be nice. out. Uh, I don't know if I can give the street date. Uh, we'll but bring it, you back closer to that time to do yeah, that part. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Uh, I do believe, uh, t- to the dismay of my wife, it'll be out on our five-year anniversary. So, uh, thankfully, we do not have a record release planned for that day. Nice. Yet. Do you have any gigs coming up with Craig? Uh, we, again, soon to be announced. Uh, we, we will have a... You guys are I, I, so I, mysterious. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? What the H-E double hockey sticks, Krieg? <laughs> if Neil watches this, which he won't. Which he won't. But if Neil were to watch this, it's because <laughs> he does the planning and I don't, so... Mm. Um, fair play. I believe everything will be announced shortly. Uh, probably playing. I think uh, Brooklyn, then Providence, then New York, or pro- sorry, New York, Providence, and Philly. Ooh, so not and bad. A little nice weekend uh, around Veterans Day. And even though I am an outspoken person who doesn't really much care for black metal, I will say Krieg fucking rules. I didn't give him a shot until they're split within integrity, and I've been a fan ever since. Which I am technically on. Oh. Oh. Look at you. Well done. I mean, hey, if you you, you had told me at the what? age of, uh, what was that, 21, you know, when I was a yeah. short that I'd have a split with integrity, I'd be on a split with integrity. It's pretty sick. I, I, you know, just, hey, hey it's a light, live track because, you know, we couldn't get in the studio because it got, you know, thrown yeah. on us so, so quick, but, uh, yeah. Nice. Is Scott... Te- is- hey, technically correct. That's the best kind of correct. Is Scafe got anything coming up or? Uh, I am technically not a full time member of Scafe. No. Uh, Scafe, as far as I know, is definitely not doing any more live shows. Um, oh, I'll leave it there. Mm. Uh, it's I probably because do... you have Ska in the beginning of the band name. True. They're waiting for that fourth wave. Big if true. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for that fourth. Finally, wave. a big if true. That'd be funny. If the fourth wave of Ska was just Scafe. I mean, it would still be better than anything the fourth I mean, wave. You ain't kidding. Yeah. You and again, win. like I could be a third wave apologist, but you know, no, we're better than that, aren't no, we? we? We've all grown as people. Mm-hmm. In, ugh, I, I'm sorry. What right. was my, have you not been to a? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You haven't danced to uh, that's the impression I get at a wedding. You know, in your in your no. 40s? No, I have my 30s. And you know, I know, I know why? Because I don't get invited to weddings. <laughs> <laughs> again, technically correct. The best kind no. of correct. I'm normally throwing up by the time. Uh, that song comes on. Not bragging, just saying. Is it time for homework, dude? I believe so. All right. Let's see what we got going here. We had a guest, or a couple guests. We had two. We did. I forget who the fuck they were. I'm going to take a break to pee by the sh- behind the shit again. All so, right. Break TV time. Is. Well, that's not nice. I can't wait to stop doing that. My bandmates just called me Dennis McGenitals in the group. <laughs> 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 I, on that note, we're back. Yeah, put that in there. They, 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 how dare those guys? That's funny. It is pretty funny. I liked it. Who said it? Oh, one Evander Williams 
Ah, that's for for a, a, a two time flake. That's a pretty good joke. Yeah, he's a funny boy sometimes. Probably because he's an alcoholic and, a pu- <laughs> and too pussy to come on the podcast. I'm gonna lose my job. I'm like whatever, dude. What job, dummy? And actually, he makes more money than most of us. Oh well, yeah. no, the outlaw makes a ton of money too. Yeah, so basically, just me and Hoops and Marty are the only losers in the band. With one singular stream yeah. of income, imagine, Im- imagine. <laughs> Let's get into this homework. Let's get into this homework. We had uh, two guests last week, uh, Mr. Mike Murrow and uh, and Adam, Mr. Adam Siakowski. Um, they brought. It was a good. This is a good week for fucking homework, dude. I enjoyed. One could say I enjoyed homework this week, dude. It felt good. Do you want to do Adam's stuff or Mike's stuff first? Uh, I'll start with Adam. Okay. Cause so I can swing it around. Uh, let's start with Doom's pro-life control. This that well, their side of a split, I guess. Yeah. From '94. Yeah, I didn't find that out till later that it was a split. Yeah. Now this is also goes against my metal cred that Doom's always been a band I slept on, because Doom was a band that everybody I saw with their patch or their shirt was a total bag, <laughs> and it turned me off from like wanting to listen to the band. I, did, I brushed and on one. So I, I kind of fell into them within like the last five or six years. I brushed on Police Bastard early. Yeah, that's the first one I listened to before. And too. I thought that's all I needed out of them. Yeah. No, they have a lot of stuff. And yes. So I have, a, I have some notes here. Uh, Go for it. Uh, first and foremost, I was never cool, so I always liked Doom. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, what I said was I can't listen to this without imagining sped up black and white Vietnam footage and repeat. Oh, absolutely. Um,. They're basically a band that could get away with farting on a snare drum as long as they D-beat over it. True. <laughs> um, all-time great of the genre. Even True. if I Even if I had to stop wearing my Police Bastard shirt because of the misunderstood swastika on the front, back to Police yeah. Bastard. Uh, you know, really just not a good look, you know, even if it is in... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if, if any budding graphic designers or boot... Like the uprising of bootleggers have modified a logo of any. I have not lately. seen one recently. Uh, the, the one I got from a, a legitimate—it uh, was a legitimate. It was a boot, uh, but uh, like you know, a good site back as in the legit day. as boots can be. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, it might have actually been Warlord Clothing, um, which is probably where I've gotten all my ass suck shirts too, which also explains a lot. Uh, nice. Yeah, I, like it, it's something to hit the trash real quick, just because. I think one person pointed out, I think I t- tried to take a paint marker to it and just, you know, yep, that's hit the trash. Yeah. Not a good look. What a public. shame. But pro-life control. I said some Doom songs are longer than I remember, but still manage to move fast and it's not boring. Rags to Riches is that jam. Somewhere I've heard Carcinogens 700 times, but I can't place where. And it's long for a length uh, of a split like this, but not boring. I said uh, as far... Only as far as Doom records are concerned, a six and six and a half out of ten. Did you listen to the other side? No, I did not listen to the other side. Hmm. All right, Doom selfish split pro life control. Selfish, that's what it's called. Yeah, is that that band I'd actually had heard before from Mr. Janus? Uh, I just wrote another band I slept on because the people I saw rocking their shirts and patches annoyed me. But damn, this is pretty gnarly. It's everything you really want out mm-hmm. of crust punk, pissed sure off is. vocals. The discharge beat over fast riffing. The selfish side was along the same lines, just a little snottier in the vocal category. Yeah, I should. The doom side is better side, but both are were really cool. Now I'll get my head out of my ass and follow up with more records from both bands. Seven out of ten. Man, mm-hmm. you take it a shit on people that listen to Doom is actually it makes me really glad I didn't suggest to listen to Os Rotten for this week's homework <laughs> for you guys. Uh, Os Rotten is another one Janice showed me because fantastic. He, he was band. he's the guy. Dave Janice, shout out to him, freaking guest, frequent listener. Um, I always because Os Rotten, all the kids and I knew in Delaware like when I was just coming up, rocking Os Rotten shirts were fucking assholes. They were just not dickheads surprised. and just, or junkies. So I was also like, not surprised. so I'm just like, I don't want to fucking fuck with that band. Same, that Doom was the same thing. And so it was like, I was just like, fuck that. Don't want anything to do with them. And then way later in life, like in my thirties, I would listen to the, ba- like, Dave, like Dave would show me the bands. I'm like, he's like, no dude, listen to them. And then I'm like, oh fuck. He's right. This is really fucking cool. And I slept on it super, super hard. But yeah, Os Rotten's good. But a lot of bands from I I I gave a second chance of because Dave was like 
pretty much get your head out of your ass. Don't worry about who's rocking their shirts or their or their butt flaps or whatever, and just listen, and you'll fucking enjoy so much cool shit. And he's right all the time. The first round of my gifts, actually, pretzels. Oh. We're going to eat pretzels on microphones now. Yes, it's a very good idea. All right. Guess what? Crime, crime, crime. I'm turning it off. You fucking coward. I sure did. <laughs> so, what, you know what I have for dinner today? Pretzels. Two sliders of Hanover's hard pretzel. Out of the big ass oh, bucket. You mean the best kind? No, yeah, absolutely. Oh, shit. All right. What else did Adam bring to the. T- oh. Do you want to get Silenus. The Silenus garden is burning. Silenus. So I guess. So a lot. I said it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. All I've right. heard the songs once or twice before in the daily mix, and I've skipped it. And I can, I can. He said that they were really good live at the yard, and mm-hmm. I said I can see it coming across good live, especially if you're getting swayed by like, if the if they're getting a great reaction, you could be like, I guess they're good. So I said they're good. I guess, but nah. Two out of ten. Jesus. Not for me. Uh, unfortunately, I came... I, I did. I come with an incomplete on my homework on that one, but... Did you happen to check the album art? It's like... It's all brown and green and black and shit. Oh, I must have seen a different album cover then. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Silenus, <laughs> the garden is burning. I just put well-executed mid-aughts metalcore, which is really saying something because mid-aughts metalcore is normally, normally terrible. Uh, nice little bit of chaotic drumming, heavy as hell riffing, great use of samples, keys, and multiple vocal styles. Would definitely like to see this live. Seven out of ten. Damn, I enjoyed right. it, and I'm not a big fan of metalcore post like '05. Yeah, so that it's a big sway. This is it was like it came out like within the last couple of years. When it stopped, shocking. when metalcore stopped being creative and just started getting stupid, derivative. Even I was like, no, thank you. All right. And then you, let's go to Murrow's homework then. Oh, uh, this, this fucking put a bump in the front of my pants. I bet. Uh, I'll start with Church of Misery, born under a mad sign. Ugh. Uh, chef's kiss. Honestly, mm. I, the, one of those bands that you like forget that I love so much mm-hmm. until I listen to them again. And it's like it's like, oh shit, I need to listen to this band more often, and then just continue to re- repeat the cycle. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like. I, l- I want to listen to Church of Misery. I forget to listen to Church of Misery. Cycle back around. What do you have to say about this record? Well, Church of Misery, Born Under a Mad Sign, which I think is a hilarious album title, by the way. Because, you know, instead of bad, they said mad. I They're realized there's a theme fuck. to the record. It's creative. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I love more. The music within, or knowing how terrible of a time Tom is having listening to this. <laughs> Probably both, to be quite honest. Japan and drugs are cool. But it's when they join forces that the real power is unleashed. To quote a wise man named Lyle Chipperson, this is so heavy, only the devil could lift it. Contender for album of the year for me, 10 out of 10. Wow. I fucking love it. I need to sit down with it a little bit more than that, but... uh, Is it that new? It's it's 2023, yeah. I did not realize it when I started listening to it. Um, I didn't know it was even out until he brought it to our attention. It um, it really does harken back to just bong so riffs of, mm. of Sabbath, uh, like top era Sabbath. That's one of the yeah. things I have written before you before you blow it a little more. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's good. I just don't like it. Crowbar meets <laughs> it's good. I just don't like it. Crowbar meets Black Sabbath. Riffs in production are great, just not for me. Simply that. Three mm. out of ten. I'm I, gonna listen to it on the way home. I did not see you liking it in the least so imagine your surprise yeah. i was like nit i'm pretty sure he brought this to the table knowing pretty much saying here this is for you i tried it yeah so I'm, again I'm proud it's, of you. it's not bad it's I'm not proud. bad whatsoever i just of that never, style i, I, never I know you don't like that style nah but of that style cream of the crop i'm sure yeah cream of the fucking crop dude I could, you could probably throw this band on at like a party of normals and not offend anybody it's got just enough blue, like uh, pentatonic, like blues uh, r- jerk mm-hmm. offing that to just to that point, like not offend a bunch of normal, normal folk. Mm-hmm. But it's also like they have the long songs, you know, the longer songs, you know, that's of that style. Mm-hmm. But they manage to keep the time they have in the song full of 
with things going on. It's not just nothing feels like it runs on. It's not repetitive yeah. or overly just. All right, we get the point. You're just mm-hmm. like that. Need they're like that needed to be eight minutes long. I mean, especially with Stoner Rock and shit like yeah. that. Just like really over over hammering the the fucking riff. Yeah, uh, you know they don't lean on that. It, yeah. It's just it's great. They're I fucking I love that record. I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> I had a bump in the front of my pants listening to it. All right, what did you think of uh, the other one you brought us there? Uh, Demon Brother Beyond the Veil. Mm. Uh, I'm sure this didn't go well either. My notes. Sludge. Getting to the heavy parts is a bit of a chore. Mm. Somehow worse than bad Mastodon. I say that as a fan of the good Mastodon. Mm. Uh, Somehow less enjoyable than noise, i.e. like a sore dream or something. Nah. Two out of ten. Jesus Uh, Christ. Uh, it's it's well it's a band. I, honestly, the first thing that stood out to me that it was a band on Iron Long Records, and it sounds like it was a band on Iron Long Records. <laughs> not necessarily a bad. Not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, yeah, I think this is the on as far as Spotify is concerned, it's their only release. No, there's yeah, I, think, I think there's a de- there's a demo, and I think a shorter one. I think too. the only song, thing I saw today, uh, as of today. I believe it was only the. It might just be line. a demo. It was like it was four songs. It was almost a half hour, and I was like, "Man, this is the only like a proper bit proper release." I know that's that's for sure, though. Uh, Demon Brother Beyond the Veil. I love when bands that treat feedback like it's its own instrument, <laughs> and I encourage more bands to do this. This shit is chromagnon as fuck. Just a huge wall of noise, barely held together by some good plotting riffs. Straight up Stegosaurus music. <laughs> And I'm here for it. Eight out of ten. Mm. I fucking enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was pretty awesome. What'd you think? I'd, again, pretty solid. Uh, wow, it smells like farts. Uh, <laughs> again, it, it really does sound like a, a band on Iron Long Records. No. Uh, you know, that's really what hit me. And, you know, it was solid, not something I'd really go out of my way to listen to again, but, you mm-hmm. know, solid. Yeah. All right. And um, I enjoy it quite a bit. His comedy homework. Oh, yeah, he did give us comedy. Yes, he did. Uh, he gave us something that he knew we'd already all listened to. And that was David Tell? Yeah. Not in a long time I'd seen that. But he's, he wanted us to do a refresher of it. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta be honest, I, you know, not my favorite David Tell. Oh, no, I, not at all. I would agree with that, yeah, but like, it's still funny. Da- yeah, it is funny. Uh, like it, David Tell is a seriously underrated comic. Very dirty, very funny, very just, you know, like great delivery, the whole nine yards. Yeah. That one just seemed to miss the mark a little bit for me. But yeah, but the the worst to tell is better than most people's best. Absolutely, mm-hmm. better than Absolutely. Or better than most people's. Also, best. I think nowadays, thank God, he's properly rated, especially amongst comics. Yeah, sure. it just took him till he's half dead to I finally know. fucking get it. <laughs> I but, mean, there are there are uh, I I can't remember who they refer to as the comics comic, but you know there are those comics. Yeah, him. He's, pro- I mean, the, probably he's the one on the East Coast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I've seen him twi- that, that comedian that all of your comic friends love. Yeah. I've seen yeah. him twice in the last two and a half years. Hasn't missed a fucking beat. I haven't seen him since the early aughts, which I fucking feel bad about. I just wrote, uh, David, tell your mouth isn't pregnant. <laughs> hey, not- your mouth's not pregnant. All I wrote was in the middle of a crowd of the crowd losing their shit laughing. He says, man, I think I'm bombing. I know. Yep. Yeah. That- this <laughs> man is a treasure. Ten out of ten. But I do agree with Bill. It is probably the bottom of his output. Mm-hmm. But I, still to, great. That, to that point on the, the, the bombing joke, you know, the one yeah. thing, like, it, I kind of wondered if I had missed something, you know, the crowd reactions. I was yeah. doing other stuff last night when yeah. I was listening to this, and, you know. Crowd's losing their goddamn mind. He's like, mm-hmm. man, I think I'm bombing here. I, right? he, he managed to roast a lot of the audience and, get you know, get away <laughs> with it. And, yeah. you know, like, everybody seemed like they were enjoying it. A riverboat to get rid of white trash people. <laughs> I I did just watch this right before, like right around when we f- before we started this podcast because I forgot I went hunting for YouTube Atel content. Yeah, and this is the special where I identified his one crutch where he'll go now and he'll suddenly like yeah. change the subject yeah. while the crowd laughs and Tom Segura has copied it. I don't know if that's a crutch Ooh. as much as just like his thing. I it's it's not like a it's not a like a, a dig against Segura. Yeah. It's maybe not talking about a tell, but a tell a tell did it first is all I'm saying. And the art audience participation penguin bit killed me. (laughs) So many, so many good (laughs) jokes. Um, and on the scale of Dave, a tell seven and a half out of 10. I just love the fact that 
he'll be up there killing, and, and he's, he's acting. It's acting like it's, it's rolling over him. It's just like he doesn't react. He's not like, oh, thank you. He doesn't like laugh at his own shit. He's nonplussed. He even he's like, you could, like the crowd could not be there, and he'd still be delivering it the same way. Yeah, the dude is fucking brilliant and pretty he's much untouchable. Best. Yeah, that that was great, and I'm glad Murrow got me to listen to it again. Mm-hmm. It's been too long. But yeah, it's great, but yes, it, of course, it's nowhere near as good as Skanks for the Memories or fucking, uh, was it, Captain Miserable and shit like that. But it's still a great fucking special. Mm-hmm. Now, what do we got? Oh, do you want to go first? you want me to go first? I'll go first. All right. Because I have uh, three assignments from you. Oh, yeah, I went a little heavy. I'm sorry. It's all good. I'll start with the comedy. Okay. This caught me out of nowhere. Tom Takar's Takar Noir. <laughs> I like that the Fort Collins sign just says Fort, and it's mm-hmm. hu- it's massive, just Fort right Did behind Did anybody get them. the name of that bar? Was it actually the Fort? I don't. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. No. Uh, I thought... Um, I just know it is in Fort Collins where he shot it. Mm-hmm. And he referenced for about yeah. five minutes. Uh, I thought he was someone else. I didn't expect to see his face. Have you never seen him before? <laughs> nah. I thought I thought he was another guy who put out a special recently, but it's uh. it's not him. Meditate, or as they call it, liberal prayer. <laughs> he is the best <laughs> AYG guest, hands down. Mm. He is fucking great. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> he uh, a jo- he goes. Uh, that joke didn't go so well. All right, that was a. A, a joke of his didn't go so well, and he said, "All right, that was for nine of you. That's all right." <laughs> <laughs> TJ Max Maxanistas Maxanistas <laughs> slash grocery store stuff, uh, stuff of no, st- a store of stuff no one would ever want. Flaming hot milk, <laughs> <laughs> and his I think his best bits started about twenty minutes in, like the Black Panther movie theater, the TV yeah. screen, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the one thing I actually, all of the jokes that I have referenced here for for my homework is uh, they're all like the last half. Right. I, I think I it, really it's, think it's, he just like he hit a stride like midway through. Uh, totally. Yeah. Uh, it's backloaded for sure. Yes. The big dick tax. The H and R cock. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have sl- I said hot people slash big dick tax slanty face. <laughs> I was like oh. <laughs> uh, honestly, I like one of the like, more it went on, the higher my score got. Yeah. Uh, the ban from Twitter, Twitter for impersonating Jackson Galaxy for the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially as a recent cat dad just really fucking hit me on just like, especially just like uh, just taking, just baiting the shit out of people for like a yeah. fucking year. Mm-hmm. I give it a solid eight out of 10. I, fucking great. I, I, he he hits a joke uh, right there, and you know, just like it's like you know, I just got drunk one night and decided to fucking nuke it all. <laughs> <laughs> I just and you know, he I think he said to, like he was uh, he was roasting people's cats. Like some of your you know pictures of your cats. I'll you know like I'll rate your cats, and he was rating them all like three out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I think I I think I remember when he was doing that on Twitter. I think I was still on Twitter for that. Um, and the the end of that was I think he had actually he convinced a dude uh, who would hit him up for advice. <laughs> he's like hey my cat you know and, and again as a recent cat dad like i i have dealt with this i thankfully did not go to the, the fake jackson galaxy uh twitter but uh cats peeing uh, you know peeing and pooping outside of the box and like what do i do and he's like he's got to see you they're too. they're an observation based animal and they need to see you do it <laughs> and, and he says he's like the joke goes on a little bit and then he's like i think i remember seeing him say something along of this isn't working. <laughs> yeah, he did say that. Dude, God. Are you familiar with the podcast, Are You Garbage? No. Okay. It's a basically you'd, you'd really a like podcast it. where they sit down, comedians, and for, determine if they grow up as garbage people or and they currently live as garbage people. You know, or trash, plagues. Whatever. Once again, the reference Brookside. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like I would absolutely love yeah. this. Well, Takar yeah. came on this first time, and it's, the, the whole thing is like determining if you're a trash person. And he's there pounding Trulies. <laughs> he's double fisting. He has one. He has a Truly in one hand and a black iced coffee in the other. And it's just bang, 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 bang. And the second time he comes in, I'm thinking of the second time he came in, he had a big gulp cup full of cold brew. 
It was a legit 7-Eleven big gulp cup. He's like, yeah, you can just fill your 7-Eleven cup full of cold brew, and they won't even charge you f- for coffee or whatever. What a psychopath. He is a fucking weird dude. <laughs> I got to He's watch a those. weird motherfucker. Yeah. He's it a, was it honestly it was it was fun, especially like that last half it was a lot funnier yeah. than I like than yeah. I yeah he's just a guy who goes under the rate goes under the radar because he didn't start off in New York or California he's he was a I think an Indiana boy then yeah, I think went to Chicago and well, stayed I think in he the lives, see, I think he said he lives in New York he's now. in New York now but just recently so he always went under the radar until he actually came out to where comedy thrives and instead of staying in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's fuck. He fucking rules. I'm glad you liked it. Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. I'll go to, um, what well, do you want me to do your comedy first? And yeah. Then actually, go to music? Yeah. That'd be good. All right. Uh, where the fuck did I put it? Right over there. Oh, there mm-hmm. it is. Uh, it's a podcast. Uh, if you want to call it that called, uh, it's a show really of the local boy, a Philadelphia guy, uh, Tim Butterly, also of the dad meat podcast. Uh, the, and his new show is called Field Trippin' with Tim Butterly. And it's basically him doing drugs with other comedians. And going on field trips. And going on field trips. Field trippin'. Mm-hmm. Get it? Exactly. Now, I have now gone through almost every episode. But this is when I first watched... I wrote this after I first watched two of them. It says, first off, whoever made that intro and does the editing is a mastermind. They did. They did a fucking great job of it. They wrote the song yeah. and everything. Uh, I watched the Mike Cannon and Sam Town episodes. Both were fantastic. So good. And this will now make my regular rotation. The fact that uh, it's 20 minutes means it's digestible. You can s- take a shit and watch an episode. Uh, and then the Let's only get other thing, back to that. The only other thing I wrote is uh, Drugs Rule. <laughs> and I gave it a 9 out of 10. That dude is a treasure. And honestly, I think if... Dude, Philly, the Philly comedy scene is great, but I think if Butterly were to go to New York, and just he would just be fucking huge by now. He's an untapped fucking dude. He's fucking great, dude. He's super underrated on stage. He, uh, one of the episodes, he took uh, one of my favorite comedians, current comedians, uh, Mike Cannon, and he went to the Central Park, I think, to Central Park Zoo. That's it. And they ended up not being able to film there. Apparently, you're not allowed to film at the zoo. Central Park is very strict about people filming there. Yeah. So they did it covertly. So they tried to do it in the zoo. And so the first, like, I'd say 15 minutes of the episode are just them in the park itself. Just talking. Just talking. But it's funny as shit. Yes. And then the last five minutes are them just staring at a seal. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Like I said, the guy, the guest was Mike Cannon, and then it was somehow like he says goodbye to Mike Cannon, and Mike Cannon's walking away, and it launches into Tim song, dude. doing a cover of Foo Fighters' "My Hero," there but it's goes. there goes Mike Cannon. <laughs> Watch him as he goes, and he actually splices in a full music video of him doing this, and it's fucking hysterical. By the way, the dude playing guitar that is his brother. Paul. Paul Butterly, who was also in... He's currently in Freight Train. He used to be in Little League and Kill Verona. Follower and listener. Shout out to him. Paul Butterly? Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out Paul. But yeah. So yeah, the fucking song at the end, normally I hate musical comedy, but, but. that was so fucking good and funny. <laughs> just there goes Mike there Cannon, goes and it's just like Mike spliced Cannon. in pictures of him just walking through like the, the little turnstile thing of the zoo. Literally walking oh, and watching God. as he goes, Damn dude. it, dude. And it's funny because it's Tim, the guest, and then the producer. I think his name's Noah. Yeah. And the dude Noah just sits there and eats on camera the entire <laughs> fucking time. And for some reason, it reminded me of the dude on Kids in the Hall. Do you guys ever watch Kids in the Hall? Oh, absolutely. Not in a long time. Do you remember Bellini? Yeah. No. The fat guy that would just wear a towel and just show a up in random, bit, a little bit, random yeah, parts? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking the entire time. I was fucking... If you ever laughed while you're shitting... Like, really hard while you're shitting. It's a great feeling. Okay. I watched the first episode. I watched it. It was the Mike Hannah episode. And I was laughing while taking a shit. And it was probably the best, one of the best shits I've ever taken. So, okay. Back, back to this. It, it, am I the only one that is just straight up in and out when they poop? No, because I, I... He does, too. I don't... I, I am a... I love taking shits. I go into the bathroom. Fans on. Lights are on. Doors Absolutely. closed. 
No one can touch me. No one can come near me. It's my safe zone. I'm there. I'm looking at my phone. I'm like watching like videos on YouTube. I'm still there for it's same, but I'm I'm, I'm still re- there for business. I'm reading. I'm reading books. <laughs> I will. I have but no problem. Dennis reads the Cimmerillion. I have <laughs> no problem. I actually just finished Stephen <laughs> King's Gwendy's Button Box on the toilet. Uh, just maybe like a week ago. Yeah, I spent like upwards of forty five minutes on the toilet to the point where every time I get up after a shit, my legs are asleep. <laughs> I, that's my fucking. That's my me time. Leave me be. That's my time, dude. So, I I like to pooping, dude. I I get the poop out of the way so I can go back to my me time outside of the bathroom. Well, if I leave the bathroom, people will bother me. Well, person bothers you. Yeah. <laughs> Is this questions, 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 or responsibilities? Real life. When I'm in my my toilet bubble, no one can fucking affect me. And I, just, I just, I just, get, I just, like, I go to the bathroom and I go back and sit down at my desk and go. <sighs> no, I'm doing this. Nobody, at, nobody bothers me. No, yeah, I'm me doing too. This at home. Yeah, of course, yeah. me too. Like you know, got, I mean, the, got the bidet firing off. If I'm it's done, a, if it's a work situation, I'm, I'm, I'm business. I'm all business. Also, I don't work in an office, so I'm like shitting at like a Wawa or a Rofo. <laughs> so whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought honestly, there's uh, been a lot of new podcasts I like, but. It's hard to say you're going to keep listening to a podcast because I already listened to so many that I don't want to stop listening to. Mm-hmm. This one's broken. It's going to have to make the regular rotation. Mm-hmm. So and everybody they- should check out uh, Field Tripping with Tim Butterly on YouTube and also check out his other podcast, uh, Dad Meat, which is him and Mike Rainey, and it's also one of my regular listens, and mm-hmm. it's a great Same. listen. It's- He's a Philly guy, so if you're fi- local to Philly, he's... He does local shows a lot. Go check him out. You Rainy won't be disappointed. Too. Rainy too. Mike Rainy too is very good. Mm-hmm. Let's but get into music. You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I'll start with Hail of Bullets, Frost okay. of War, or of of Fro- of Frost and War. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Now I is was... it because of Martin Van Drunen? I have notes. Okay. It's like eighty percent. It, it, it really just honestly, it, what I wrote is trying to recapture consuming impulse. Okay. From Pestilence and the first few at, uh, as fix albums via Martin's vocals, but yeah. just ended up as a boring dismember copycat. Um, it feels like the late two thousands miss death metal missing the mark for me. Honestly, it is. I definitely see the dismember mm-hmm. thing. I didn't love his vocals Me so too. fucking I much. I fucking love his voice. I have a note about I that. Really I'm so mad that he went down the road the road he went down. I have notes about that What did I miss vocal. there? Oh, he dropped the hard R Oof. on uh, the internet. Well, more so through it. Yeah. <laughs> didn't drop it. Well, I'm gonna, I did dream that. of Genie out of this one. Yeah, he... <laughs> but yeah. I can hear the Go racism ahead. in the riffs. <laughs> <laughs> the vocal style rule... <laughs> vocal style rules... Given song yeah. titles, I should have clocked this for questionable a long time ago. Red Wolves of Stalin, Stalingrad. Everything's World War Two based. Berlin, all their material. World War Two, sure, but I said I'd love to hear a new slash young band do this style well. Slow death metal. Uh, no, like they're not slow. They're not fast. They eh, certainly they're are. Like, they're more. They're mid not to, that mid, fast. Mid to fa- fast. I mean, it's not yeah. speed metal by any means, yeah. but it's it's fast. I said mid paced at worst. Uh, Two hundred stab wounds is close vocally. Like their vocalist, like is a little a little close in the sound. And if this art can be done, um, it's art. If this can be done without being repetitive, I said six and a half. He is when it comes to like my metal output in my bands. He's who I rip off more than anyone. Mm. Who's that, Martin? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could pick where you could pick pick much hard R side. Yes. Uh, pick, you know, pick yeah. much much worse. Damn, this should have come up when Look we un- up. when we uncanceled bands before. I will. Um, well, we could we can probably do that segment again. It's true. Um, I will send you. I forget the titles off the top of my head. He did two Pestilence records mm-hmm. that are fantastic. Consuming Impulse and the one before which was. Don't remember, but it wasn't as good. So really, uh, uh, there was ceremony of the ancients was after without him, which was also a good record from Pestilence. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that first record from Pestilence, but I mean, you know, consuming impulse is also kind of hard to stop. And I'm so. not sure how many Asphyx records he did. 
I do love of, aspects. I want to say at least three. He did the rack. He did last one on Earth. Uh, he did. I think he did most of the good ones, if yeah. not all of them. Uh, like I think even the newer, even the newer uh, is fixed records were just fucking fantastic. No, they're great without him, but I prefer them with him. Oh, absolutely. He's definitely Con- a dude I fucking consuming impulse and malleus maleficarum. There you go. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. other one. I was never gonna remember that. Yeah, I do love that name. He's. He consuming, consuming Impulse has been one of my favorite albums for entirely too fucking long. His uh, later in life vocabulary on Facebook aside, not vocally, great. <laughs> the dude fucking was yeah. killer. Let me get into Will Haven. Yeah, I don't see you liking this. El Diablo. Uh, I said, uh, prepare to be shocked then. Oh. Base, <laughs> I said, bass tone goes stupid. Yeah, it does. Sometimes chaotic slash all over the place riffs are annoying to listen to. Not theirs. I said, I got through this and wanted to listen to it a second time, despite its length. Nine out of fucking ten. Wow. The one thing, I, the one thing, the first thing that jumped out to me was when I pulled it up on Spotify, it was, the, like, the top recommended band was Coles. And mm. right there I was just, okay, I'm going to give this an honest listen. Yeah. I, it, honestly, what I wrote was definitely a band from the late 90s, early 2000s that I missed. 94 can easily mm-hmm. see myself being concussed into oblivion at auto bar <laughs> with that as the soundtrack in the yeah. background. Like that sounds like something I got, would have got my ass beat to in like the mid two thousands. You know, the, uh, the band I saw them open for the first time I saw them was uh fury of five. <laughs> that also checks out. Unfortunately, <laughs> it was vision disorder, fury of five, will Haven <sighs> and will Haven. Op- no Burnside open, but will Haven played second. Will Haven's problem was, they rarely played hardcore shows. They were a they, rev band. They were. Uh, they started off as this, there was this rev Revelation Records sub label called Crisis Records. They started off the first two records were on Crisis, and then the third one was Revelation because Crisis just ceased to be. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, um, uh, Will Haven was from Sacramento, and who else from Sacramento? The Deftones. Even Stevens. Oh, sorry. The Deftones. So they ended up doing a shit ton of new metal tours where I think is if, and, and went over like a fart in church because they don't yep. sound like new metal at, Not all. at all. Whereas if they would have done like hardcore shows, I think they would have been, been way more big. They would have gotten been way more talked about than they actually ended up being. Mm-hmm. If anybody feels like doing further listening, they also, everybody but the singer started in another band called the Abominable Iron Sloth. It's kind Not of a Euro. little more sludgier, and a little has a little bit, a little bit, a little more southern t- twang to it. I'm good, but it's still good. But yeah, Will Haven fucking rules, and mm-hmm. they just get overlooked for being a I super... fucking band that had all these huge opportunities, but they just played the wrong yeah. shows. I super like this record. I'll keep listening to this. They have an EP before it. I forget what the fuck. I know it's self-titled. If you can find that, that's very good too. Now, what did I assign you again? Oh, uh, yeah, you gave me some a lot of stuff, too. Oh, I gave you two things. That's right. You did. I got it right here. Um, one of them is a band you'd brought to me before. Is the band Godskin Peeler. Which, I don't know if I brought this up, but uh, I found out that that's actually a reference to Elden Ring. Yeah, it's a weapon. Yeah. Because when you try to look up Godskin Peeler on YouTube, Elden Ring you get 40,000 <laughs> guides on yeah. How to properly use it to defeat a boss yes. in Elden Ring. I also found out yeah. the hard way. <laughs> yeah. But the record's called uh, Heaven Beneath Me. Another song, with, another record. It's three fucking songs. It's maybe six minutes long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'd be shocked if the guitar player wasn't a huge 108 fan. Because his style fucking reeks of it. And that's not a bad thing. I really like the last release I heard from this band. And I really enjoyed this one. But I don't think they will reach their final form until they stop shackling their inner. They stop shackling their inner weirdo. When they finally go full force bizarre, mm. they will reach a level that they will be untouchable. Mm. They've got so much potential, and I think they just don't go that extra step to be like you know their final form. I don't think they've really hit their final form yet. Now, I'm not saying they won't. But if they it's just yet to be seen, they're brand it, new. Yeah, I, I think this band is gonna. I just wrote. I think this band is gonna be fucking huge soon. And I think if they keep going in the direction they're going, 
maybe not the next release, but the release after will be one that it's going to be fucking talked about. Uh, seven and a half out of ten. My only problem is they've got two releases and they still haven't broke the twenty minute mark. <laughs> Let alone fucking ten. Yeah, I think. but they're they're really good and like where I see their ideas and I see what they want to do and I'm here for it. But they need to embrace their weirdo. I wonder if it'll and, come out uh, when they yeah. do an LP. Stop trying to fucking shackle yourself to hardcore or any genre at all and just go and you will fucking just kill. Redline that shit. Yeah, I fucking, I enjoyed it. Nice. And I really enjoyed the one before it too. And I think that's a band I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on Keep an eyeball on. on. And another one, this is another, the next release you gave me was one where it's another band that I just ignored for really stupid and childish reasons. Their name is fucking awful. It's awful. And I remember seeing the name, and in my head, I'm like, definitely Euro, this is going to stink. And I just always just passed it by. But that's uh, Kill the Client. Still a terrible name. I'm sticking with that. Not a good name. Uh, that is a Redcore reference. Is it? As far as uh, I can tell. That is, yeah, that was a... Uh, I don't know what Redcore is either. Redcore? Oh. Uh, actually, it might not be. Cop band? They weren't I all know that. who Red Cord is, but... Their singer was a cop. Yeah. Kill the Client is a relapse band. Yeah. Uh, Red Cord wanted to be one. Set to Extinction, yeah. right? Yeah, Set to Extinction. Yes. I just wrote, uh, I was all like, this name is Mad Corny, yo. But then I was like, yes, please. Solid, <laughs> noisy, and ridiculously catchy grind that leans more towards punk than it does metal. Mm-hmm. Thought this had a weird sample about pineapple seltzer until I realized it was a YouTube ad. <laughs> uh still skank to it eight out of ten i enjoyed it thoroughly uh it has the definitely has the relapse grind feel you think it's like a la brutal truth yes I but so. i think this is more going down brutal truth's punk era instead of brutal truth's metal era i think it's because this record was from 2011 yeah i just think yeah it's definitely because grind you know you could either go closer to the punk side or closer to the metal side mm-hmm. this went more to the punk side yeah. which i wasn't expecting and i was pleasantly surprised by and yeah i fucking thoroughly enjoyed it Sick. i thought it was good do they have anything else i don't think so i think that's their only release and i was like oh like i remember said i was like oh this has to be european and then i was like well we're at least canadian no they're no from they're like, from texas t- yeah I was like, they know she should know better with that name. I was doing when I was doing know better. <laughs> uh, research to see if I wanted to try and assign them to you or not. Because I figured, A, there's slim chance you haven't heard of it because they're a relapse band. Mm, I am a and, relapse stand. And because of what they sound like, I was like, he's probably heard of it, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Yeah, I did. I couldn't find any bands they were associated with. I figured they might be members of something else. I couldn't find it. So I was like, fuck it. Yeah. They were one of the few relapse bands I passed over because I was just like the name that stinks, name. dude. And the I was stinks. all in on Bongzilla. But <laughs> yeah. for some reason, I was like, kill the client? Nah. <laughs> to be, I mean, to be fair, in, in defense of Bongzilla, uh, you know, it, like... <laughs> they need it, too. <laughs> yeah. Bongzilla rules. Bongzilla fucking Damn, rules. Damn right they do. Shit name. Absolute dog shit name. But like, it's... I, I, I mean, it's dumb enough for what it is. I yes, was going to say, I disagree it's, for what it is. It's fitting. Yes, but it is a dumb name. Uh, yes. I mean, them, Weed Eater, I, just like bands I, yeah. just I, dare you. I just purposely avoided for a, a little bit. I dare you to wear a Bongzilla shirt. I have one. Oh. I've worn it on the podcast. Oh, well. <laughs> they have fucking great merch designs, too. So colorful, dude. Mm-hmm. If I was on edibles, I'd love the shirts even more. I'd be like, <laughs> look at all the shades, man. <laughs> yeah, Bongzilla fucking rules, but this isn't about Bongzilla right now. But yeah, no. they were one of the few... Uh, Relapse bands, and I'm normally a relapse super fan. And that time I was like, no, that's it. It's enough. I'm no, no, thank you. I've rarely been burned by relapse, except when it gets into the more goofy metal, like fucking amorphous and shit like that. Mm. I'm just like, nah. Which sucks considering how uh, how good uh, Tales from a Thousand Lakes was. I'm not, this is not something just I just me. All right, damn. No, it's just amorphous is one of those bands I'm just. That's not made for me. There's a couple on there now, but for the most part, I'm a pretty much all in on most relapse record stuff. But yeah, Kill the Client was one I overlooked, and that was that's my bad. But I'm still convinced that some of the other bands, I'm not missing anything. I'm looking at you, Christian Mistress, and fucking what was the other one Razor. 
and all their fucking shirts have a razor on it. Like you talk oh. about a shirt, a t-shirt band. Jesus, uh, ra- you mean razor from like the eighties? Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> not, I won't listen to it. <laughs> right. Nope, I'm not going to do it. I still haven't, but here's I, I would try it. I could but, totally uh, be wrong about them, but there, uh, I've got, a, I've got some friends like that are really into like old heavy metal. Like that early yeah. era fucking heavy metal. It's like, oh, it's, it depends on what album you're listening to. Oh. So I... I really, think the shirt's cool, but I haven't listened to it. They do have some fucking gaudy-ass shirts, though. <laughs> but, like, yo, but, there's, but there is stuff on Relapse I don't like. Like, I don't like Cephalic Carnage. I don't like Origin. What the yeah. fuck? And there's a couple others. I don't really like overly tech shit. Uh, huh. There was a, time, there was a time in my life where I listened to almost nothing but uh, Cephalic Carnage. Mm. Like I can see which why anybody people that like know, it, yeah, which anybody that's known me long, that long would fucking make ads. I yeah. love brand, but mm. yeah, just the overly tech stuff it just loses me. Origin uh, fucks, dude. Uh, there, I mean, I actually, I, I mean, to that point, like, I kind of went back and like uh, I got stoned as shit a couple weeks ago. <laughs> or, actually, the last week, and uh, I tried to like revisit some of the like the more techy death stuff that I listened to like in the mid two thousands. Yeah. And, like, Necrophagist uh, was one. And just try to listen yeah. to that again and just, like, holy fuck, this is boring shit. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I mean, I would imagine that uh, or- Origin would fucking come up in there, too. Uh, uh, Decre- Origin has dynamics, though. I, well, I mean, to that point, Decrepit Birth does, too. But even then, still kind of just, like, I mean, aside from, like, um, their first fucking album, which, uh, you know, their guitar players, thankfully, in fucking jail for goofy shit. Mm. Um just another band, it, like you know, just another band, you know, like one of those bands in that era that just like entirely too technical. Those, not a lot going on. Sometimes. Those bands all fall short of of Origin and Nile. But Technic, tech, like I love Nile though, because <sighs> N- old Nile rules. Nile fucks. That was one of those bands where I could listen to like I could listen to like three songs, and I that's that's like an hour of my time. Yeah. It is a fair long. <laughs> <laughs> like if I listen to two Nile songs, I'm like. Yo, it's f- that's fucking good. That's it's like, great. Mm-hmm. I'm good right there. If I listen track to six, you're like, I got stuff to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I feel you. Like shit, you know. Like I love. I 100 percent get you. Just I, the technical I, death metal is like, it doesn't take much for me to go over the, over the line of enjoying it to hating it. I mean, to that point, I think that I think you know, especially me getting back into like punk and hardcore and shit like that in yeah. the mid to late 2000s definitely hurt my fucking attention span on yeah. everything else. Like I can watch a to band for th- I can make a, watch a band for like 25 30 minutes. Yeah. Unless that band is what? I don't know. Merciful Fate, a handful Ugh. of other f- Oh, fuck off. I know. Another like another ha- but I mean to that point of like a very very good top tier band. Like I just fuck it my my attention span's gone. I didn't like start, by by like twenty like twenty thirty minutes and I'm just like cool I'm ready to go the fuck home. When I I, I just saw yeah. Nile at Soundstage not that long ago and I was about thirty minutes in I was like I'm my, good my feet kind of hurt yeah I think I'm ready to that's also just age but yeah, yeah. um it took me till probably Weeknight. like the early two thousands you know or early aughts till I finally was able to appreciate any song that was over four minutes. <laughs> And then I once, like but then those. once I was in, <laughs> I was all in. Dude, I listen to Yes. Like it has nothing to do with song yeah. length. It has all to do with like what you do in that length. If you make the song worth those eight nine minutes, cool. It's a different story. Yeah. I mean, honestly, all in how you feel. Those not minutes. to throw yeah. it all the way back to Church of Misery earlier, but I mean, just yeah, one of those bands. Right. Like it never feels like it. Another band drags the fuck on. Another band that fills time perfectly is Neurosis. I will be honest with you. The Neurosis has always been one of those bands that I've, it's always been a miss me with it. I like. I've always liked fair? ISIS. I don't. I, I don't mean to compare the two because I don't. Really no, think it's, it's, fair. it's a fair comparison. But actually. ISIS, I, like ISIS, I was always much more of a fucking fan of. Always way more interesting to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's honestly ISIS is Neurosis for the, like a modern crowd, which I yeah. mean, which is fine. Yeah, it's, but yeah, Neurosis was always like they could fill the eight minutes. To where you're like, this needed to be eight minutes. Because it's seriously like the longest build, build, build. And then when it finally hit the payoff, you're just like, yo, that needed that long of a build. I think they're definitely one of those bands I need to revisit. Yeah. Honestly. They just, they, Enemy of the Sun. Go. No. Yeah. Through Silver and Blood. Start on there. Or Times of Grace. All right. Times all right, of Grace, right, actually. I, you know what? Grace. I'm going to meet in the middle here. I'm going to text Matt Bennett. <laughs> Tom, Matt's going to agree with me, but 
Ask him anyway. Yeah. I need I need an unbiased third. Well, actually, yeah. uh, that, well, that's not really an unbiased third party. Most mostly me and him share a brain, except when it comes to his love of pop punk and my love <laughs> of of just ignorant slam metal. So Good, that sounds about right. the only two things we just differ on. But when it comes to neurosis, we're pretty much simpatico. Does the man <laughs> really, really love pop punk that much? Oh Jesus Christ! I, I mean, would, shit, I, I would have I, I wouldn't have clocked that in a hundred years. Not no, yeah. not at all. Like, I, look, defense, I love like Ladderman D four. Okay, that's the type of pop punk he likes. In his defense, he's not. I'm not talking about saves, saves the, the day. day. No, no, no. That's not my boy's Boo. lane. My boy is fucking into like this shit, like. Through talk- being a poo. I'm talking about like Jawbreaker and shit like that type of poppy okay. punk music. I just... Punk shit, for soft guys. Yes. Yeah, that, that shit missed me for a while. Yeah. You know, whatever. He saying. loses me on some of that stuff. I lose him on my love of Mortician. Fair enough. Uh, Mortician's actually one of those that I've come back around and it just because fuck of the yeah. stupid fuck. factor. I so the stupid love. fucking factor. I it's like, it's so, so cheesy. Much. It is. And it's great. It's, so it's like, you know, it's I, like... <clears throat> I love Mortician, so I love I love much. a one, I love a one minute twenty second song that has a fifty second sample. Fifty <laughs> seconds, what yeah. Mortician song you know, listen more? They're like six minutes long. <laughs> Bludgeoned. I swear to Christ, they have songs where it has a Slaughter. full movie's audio track. Trailer. The whole trailer is the sample. Trailer. I'm talking movie. <laughs> I'm talking a full feature length film, and then it just goes into, <clears throat> and you're like, yes, <laughs> I'm in. Fuck yeah. All right, so let's just, assign each other. Let's some do shit. that. Uh, we got a guest though, so it's polite to let see what he wants to. Um, so I have a comedy and I have Ooh. three albums. Ooh! Uh, I will send you the links. Thank God it's only one of you. If you yeah. can tell well, us where I, to find I, it, to, we can find it. To be fair, um, to be fair, I was trying to make up for the fact that you know Dost is uh, under the weather. Fair enough. Feel better, buddy. Technically, we're all under the weather when you think about it. Mm-hmm. True. Just some food for thought. Uh, the co- to comedy, uh, comedy to start out for was Doug Stanhope, the acid bootleg specifically. Oh, so good. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite comedians, and uh, one of the best of all. He's time. in my one top of my, five. He's like he's libertarian. Honestly, like at the risk of going off on a little bit of a, t- a political tangent like you know the libertarian shit slightly aside like he at least has a good heart it's not like the i want to fuck kids libertarian weird shit and he like, also he, when he comes to some of his libertarian shit he makes a decent if not convinc- a not a convincing argument for me but at least a decent one where it's informed exactly like it's not yeah. it's just not this dog shit uninformed you yeah. know fucking forget all the rules um for the albums, I have a black metal album by uh, Paysage Dever. Spell that. Uh, no, I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> uh, and this is actually the one I'm going to punish you guys with because it's a two-hour fucking long album. Whatever. <sighs> it is a two-hour long epic black metal album from France. Um, we, oui. Indeed. Uh, I ha- also have Unleashed. Mm. Um, my, in front of my pants is sticking up. I was listening to the live album a couple of days and ago. And I also have Gutted. Uh, Which nice. Unleashed record? Um, we're all Life Dwells. I th- uh, we're, we're No Life Dwells. We're No Life Dwells. We're No Life Dwells. I know it. Um, I got in a conversation with it about it today, uh, so I had to put it in there. The other one is Gutted. Uh, oh, chopped up oh, at ble- the altar. Bleed for us to live. Fuck yeah. yeah. Uh, this is, uh, this is actually kind of, you know, this is a, that, that was a <laughs> hidden fucking gem. Like 1994 record that just went so far under the radar for most people. I can't wait to, um, tell next week's guest what he has to listen Who to. Who is next week? Is it Brent? No, it's, no. A, it's a comedian from Delaware. <laughs> just a completely a regular normal dude. guy. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh no. I, I actually, you know what? I, I'm especially gonna have to tune in. To, I, I want to see the the reaction to you listen to <laughs> two hours of Pace Age Diver, the album Im Im. Also, Wald. this guy is a father. It's called what? With young children. Im Wald. I M no apostrophe Wald. W A L D means in winter. It's fantastic. You can't even record. like attempt to spell the band's name. Pace Age Diver. Uh, P A W. Jesus Christ. Did you have it on your phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not reading off of the phone. Uh, Are you P-A-Y-S-A-G-E crazy? P A Y S A G E space D apostrophe H I V E R. Pace H D Ver. Ooh. H I V. 
Uh, whatever. Dehiver. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you guys. It's probably Paysage. Probably. I think that's what you said, isn't it? I said Paysage. Doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever. What do you got for me, Dan? A Yankee. Hold on a second. Denim. I'm trying to write this out here, and failing miserably. <laughs> it's called M World, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, but uh, what I was going to say is uh, I remember the first time I fell in love with Unleashed. Um, we used, When I was a, a young bull, me and Johnny Hassan, all our money that we would make, well, his money he would spend on weed. My money, I was straight edge, so I would just go blow it on any records or CDs I could find at Burt's on main street hell yes and then r.i.p birds and i Good stumbled God. across uh the unleashed live album and just because there was nothing else there and honestly i wasn't huge into metal at this point in time but we took it back to uh i was working at a texaco station with him he worked there with me and we just put it on the fucking radio in there and played it and one of the songs starts off it's a live album and he's we're guys like this song is about revenge no this song is about vengeance it's called revenge and like, i was like <laughs> yup this is great and i was like his fucking banter before songs was so corny but so awesome at the same time look it, like honestly is especially from that era of uh swedish fucking metal yeah like it, like look, the look towels. <laughs> le- left hand path is good yeah clandestine's better yes dismembers i, I like dis- it more dismember is better than entombed a fucking also heart. another mm-hmm. like there were two like the two bands that really go unsung from that are are grave big time big and, fucking time. and fucking unleashed big uh, time especially especially unleashed like great great gra- grave you fucking hit on every now and then like yeah. people will fucking like oh yeah into the grave like okay grave like, has but, more good albums than entomb does absolutely i i mean I, I, to be fair i don't agree with that to be fair oh well, I you'd be love. Wrong. He likes later into. I Ooh, love fuck. later. I, into. One of the so when I was getting into death metal at the uh, well, twenty three fucking years ago, I remember mm-hmm. getting um, uh, Morningstar from yeah. Intube. God, that album fucking sucks, dick. It's fucking rules. Um, he likes, don't even he even likes me, every into. Don't even get me started on Black Juju. Fuck it, like dude, like I can listen. I, I definitely listen to some bad shit. But like, oh god, that one just that one never hit apologize. with me. Grave does not stop delivering. I, neither does dismember. Grave rules. Honestly, yeah. dismember like, too. Dismember, like mm-hmm. their co- their fucking vaccination comments aside, like what a fucking <laughs> perfect fucking band. Like oh. that band has been fucking fantastic since like an ever flowing stream. Mm-hmm. God, what was Pieces. last? Time? Yeah, right. He's got I mean, poetic. Jesus you see that? Right. Um, when I saw. Uh, one of the decibel fests at Union Transfer, Dan Seagrave was out front selling prints of the album arts that he pa- painted. Also, what, and, a f- what a fantastic artist! Jesus Christ! And he was he was there at the table, and he was signing the prints. So I I I was the hardest decision I ever made was do I buy Left Hand Path or do I buy Ever Flowing Stream? It's an Ever Flowing Stream. And I bought Left Hand Path. Fair, I, I mean, it, I was it, like, there, there, was, there was no perfect answer to that. That's, that record's perfect and it got, it opened the door to me or for me and he signed it and I have it in my house. I love that. No, I, 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 like, I, not, not to be a cool guy, but goddamn, in Clandestine, Fuck. what an underrated mm-hmm. fucking record. Always way better than Left Hand Path. I like both though. Hell yeah. I I, no, 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 no. It's not the shit on Left Hand Path. Yeah. Just, like, I mean, everybody wants to talk about Left Hand Path. Well, like, a lot of people leave, leave nah. out like, an ever flowing, ever flowing stream. A lot of people don't talk about fucking Into the Grave. People well, leave out Where No Life Dwells by fucking Unleashed, but they want to all talk about fucking Left Hand Path. Mistake? You miss fucking yeah. Dark Recollections by Car- uh, Carnage. Like, you miss, oh, you miss so many fucking records just by, like, too many people focus on Left Hand Path. <laughs> That's my only argument. I love that record. My problem with people within the tomb is that they always have that argument: is this record's better than this record? It's like, yo, they're both great. All the records are great. Instead of just picking one, listen no, ab- to listen absolutely. To all no, of them. you're absolutely fucking right. I hate yeah. when people like pull that shit. It's like, well, you absolutely. Can. No, no, we don't. I mean, the, the, thankfully, we live in the timeline where all of them exist. Yeah, you know, we're spitting right yeah. now. Yeah. Also, all right. What are you? Am I going first this week? Or are you going first? Uh, you go first. What do you got for me this week? Um. What I got for you this week is a somewhat cleaner comedian, a newer guy, an up and comer. Hmm. I stumbled across his special a couple, like a month or two ago. There's a guy named Steve Rogers. Are you familiar? Everybody references this guy. Um, 
he the, I think he's Captain America. Keep going. Well, the name of his special is Before He Was Super. Oh. He references the fact that he shares a name with Captain America. Um it's YouTube, I guess. Yes, YouTube. Nice. Um he's kind of like a dork. Nice. But that's kind of like his fucking slant and it's just It's not my usual shit I bring to you. It's just a little no. more cleaner but still fucking he's funny as shit. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, good. And as far as records, um, we've had this discussion many times on the podcast about me and certain records where it's like, I hate this genre and I hate every other band that sounds like this, but for some fucking reason, I like this. Like, as we were talking with uh, Alex, um, no, uh, Zach from Morbid Cross brought us uh, basically a the country, country guy. And I was like, this fucking rules. And like, I don't like country at all. And it was called me off guard. So it made me think of this record. This is a record I actually... This is my record when I'm in a totally shit mood and I need something a little more upbeat. This is what I normally go for. So today? Have you heard of a band called Avail? I know Avail, yeah. Okay, this record's called Over the James. Okay. Virginia Hardcore That feels like a... That, that's a Matt Bannon band. We had some Matt Bannon fucking loves Avail. Yes, he, of course I, he does. Uh, I don't know if again, we agree... Again, punk for soft kids. I don't know if he agrees on this being their best record, but I think this record's flawless, and you will listen to this record, and you'll just be like, wait, Dennis recommended me this Everybody references record? the other one. Oh, what, 4 a.m. Friday or Dixie? The the one with the walking guy on the... That's all, that's that's like their That's their logo? Logo, so yeah, it's pretty much on most of them. I don't but know. But I think you're talking about uh, for, um, the Monroe, not the Monroe, that's Far Side. God damn it. 4 a.m. Friday. Sure. But yeah, listen to over to the James. It's just upbeat, poppy, but still like harder, and it's just like a good punk rock record. And like you listen to him seriously, like why does he like this? And I honestly can't tell you why I like it, <laughs> but I fucking do. And I listen to this, I'd say every four or five months. All right, without fail. And I'm just interested to see what you would think of it. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to piggyback off of that, and I'm going to assign you just a straight-up rock and roll record. All right. You wouldn't, ex- like, this normally would, I would never assign something like this either. Oh, your fucking taste never surprises me. This band is called The New Regime. Well, that's sketchy. I know, but the album is called Speak Through the White Noise. Even neither, sketchier. Neither of those things help with the newly shaved head, by the way. <laughs> it really does not at all. Speak Through the White Noise? Yes. Uh, it's just straight up rock and roll. I won't spoil anything. Hopefully, won't. speak through the white noise means it's like anti white people. <laughs> like all that white noise, just speak right through it. Yep. I hope it is, dude. And uh, don't we all? Com- <laughs> comedy. I'm going outside the box this Uh-oh. week. Oh, you like Sam Talent? I do. This week, I'm giving you a book, and oh, that is no. Sam Talent's. Don't, don't do that. Running oh, no. <laughs> running the light. <laughs> I like. I will read it, but. You can't assign that to me. It'll take way too fucking long. You think so? And I'm in the middle of another book right fuck, now. Fuck me. I will report on this once I do f- finish it. I read it in four days. Yeah, but I'm as, glad, as I told you, I'm in the middle of another book. And I can't stop one book and start a new book. You can. And I also, I can't do that in a week and hold down a job. <laughs> so come up with something else but i will report on that once i do borrow that and read that okay i only have one other thing back up then okay it's a special by a dude i just found out about okay He's older also slightly cleaner named nick griffin nick griffin i just i just found this like within the oh, last couple oh of never weeks. mind i'm thinking of um uh eric griffin no 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 this is nick griffin and the special is called cheer up Cheer up. And it's, it is available where? Uh, Tubi slash Amazon. I got both of those. I do have another one uh, that I have not watched yet, but it is from somebody. I, m- I met the significant other of a comedian from New York uh, a couple of months back. Okay. Um, I'll send it to you guys. Uh, Jeffrey Asmus. Uh, oh, we we, just, we love. We Jeff just Asmus. went over that. Yeah. Special. Did you guys, did you have you guys watched the special? It's oh yeah, fucking fantastic. Is it okay? Yes. Fa- like uh, he's great. We we the met only his, funny white man. Yeah, we met his significant other. Uh, she dates. Or, I'm sorry. She is friends with um somebody else that we actually know. My wife works with. Right. Um, 
that lives in Brooklyn now. Her her husband her boyfriend is Tim Smith, uh, who also does comedy. They're both friends. It's Tim Smith and uh, Jeffrey Asmus. Uh, you know, uh, dude, who isn't she connected to? That's so weird. Yeah, dude, I I know. <laughs> Especially, it's fucking weird. Yeah, like, we. She, like I feel like it's bad me being from Delaware. Like I feel like I know the fuck I fucking know everybody. She manages to absolutely she actually knows eclipse, everybody. <laughs> just eclipse any you know. Yeah, we talked about his special and it is fucking fantastic. fantastic. I might actually go home and watch it then. Like I I, I didn't want to fantastic. recommend it because I haven't watched it yet. Oh, you'll you need love to it. watch it. You'll Hell yes. love it. It's it's one of my favorites this year. Um, just as his whole vibe cracks me up. He's like this timid, like skinny nerd ass dude. Sweatshirt. But he, but he fucking the name name of the special was the only funny white man, an alpha comedy special. <laughs> and he's and it's just like What's up guys? A real alpha just showed up. Oh god damn it. <laughs> so he good, is dude. so fucking funny. We're seeing him in September. Catch it on the Patreon. Are we? Yep. Oh yeah, we are. That's right. Uh you guys uh have you guys seen Sam Arill recently? I know Sam Arill. I've seen him around. twice. How I'm, is he? I, like, I've he's funny never shit. Seen him. He's my favorite current comic. Hell yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 we're going to see Nick Mullen in uh, oh, December. In December. I'll, I'll yep. be there. Hell or yes. We'll be there. Probably. Yes. We'll be there. Hell yes. Okay. Yeah. If if, uh, if if Patreon has anything to say about it, fuck, I'll pay out of pocket. I don't give a shit. Uh, exactly. It, I, I love like, Nick Mullen. He's uh his 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 bit about uh every everybody that drove to the fucking Capitol riot. Oh uh, yeah. Was fucking drunk. He's like, reposted. I'll be fine, bitch. I'm just going to kill you Mike, Mike Pence. Pence. Yeah. <laughs> I've done this a million times. I love his uh bit about stop Asian hate. It's like if you, <laughs> if you're doing it. Knock it off. <laughs> stop it. Oh uh, fuck! He, yeah, Nick Mullen fucking rules. But yeah, the Jeff Asmus special. He's a guy that I didn't really know about until like maybe like two or three years ago, and just I when like, I, this when dude I, fucking rules. When I saw Ari Shafir uh, in October, he he featured for him, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" Well, he just came over, like just moved out to New York. He's a uh, I think a Minnesota boy. Uh, something somewhere yeah there. so yeah he finally went to a place that nice a little ha- that, yeah that nice little hazy as far as remember where they're from so yeah he's I can't, he's, I can't a, come out he's on definitely that. a midwest guy but he did just move to new york recently and yeah, now yep. all of a sudden he's just like blowing the fuck up and it's mm-hmm. deserved mm-hmm. that's you'll love that fucking special Hell i'd be yeah. shocked if you didn't um do we got anything else going on thomas nah just patreon.com slash irr and ill uh again there's there's another listening party coming out in a couple of weeks. Lots of lots of stuff on there. Bonus episode every week. Three bucks. It's barely anything. So sign up. And uh, if if you're sh- if this is your first episode or whatever, if this show makes you laugh, just tell one person about it. Yeah. Just one. If yeah. that that spreads a show better than anything is mm-hmm. word of mouth. Yes. And I feel fucking corny repeating this shit over and over, but well, you got to do it. I got to do, do. It. So that's and all. We, I got. And we thank Bill for coming and hanging out of with course. us. Of course. And we can't wait to have him back and and go to Dom's again. Yes. And go, <laughs> yes. And go to Dom's again. Oofa. Hit that intro music, buddy. Moon, now, here.